Okay, there we go. Right, guys. So, uh, well, welcome to another uh, one of these live streams that we're doing. I think it's been about two weeks or so since uh, I did the last one, actually. Uh, in fact, maybe even more than that since I hosted my last um, live stream, actually. But uh, yeah, no, it's cool. It's always cool to do these for a little bit of fun. So I think the... Um, the format that we'll do for these is kind of just as usual, to be honest with you. What we'll do is, uh, the one for today, I want to go through my Sistembul Agate um, purchases and things like that that I've made for the month of June from the local assortment. So obviously we will do that and uh, I'll reveal the beers that I've bought and you guys can do your usual and comment and recommend things to me, which is always quite nice. But um, yeah. It's been this month, I think it was somewhere in the region of 150 different beers that they released, which was just, you know, it was just absolute craziness how many, uh, you know, it's just absolutely crazy um, how many beers were uh, were released in this one. It's just pretty nuts, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, at the moment, I'm drinking a Cloudberry, so, uh, not a Cloudberry Sour beer, sorry, a Lingonberry Sour which is um, which was one of the Finnish beers that was sent to me by Riku. So I just reviewed that before I came on, and uh, this one's pretty interesting, actually. So you'll see the review of this one published tomorrow morning, actually. So uh, I'll need to remember to finish off the tags and stuff in the upload before we... Um, you know, before I, before, or just after we finish the stream or whatever. So yeah, you will see the other guys appear um, later on. There's a few guys who were quite keen to join tonight. So uh, Harry from Blue Nose Beer Review said he was going to join. We've got Adam from Mercy Beers. I think Rob Hopsin said he wasn't able to join. Craig kind of, it just depends on how his day is going, if he can join. But yeah, you will see some of the other ones. And, uh, you know, some of the Dutch guys... Uh, might join us a little bit later as well. We'll just need to see about that. And uh, potentially, potentially, one of uh, my sort of beer tubing friends from Japan might join us. I'll send him the link and maybe he might be able to just pop in and say hello because it will be uh, morning time uh, for him around sort of uh, 11 p.m. or something like that. He might be able to pop in for a few minutes just to, uh, to say hello. So we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, no, let's go for this. So we've already got, uh, we've got Vanessa saying hi. Vanessa like watches pretty much every stream that we do. So it's always awesome. Vanessa, it's always nice to have Vanessa along. We've got Adam from Mersey Beer saying hello. <coughs> oh, jeez. <coughs> Don't know what I did earlier on, but yeah, I, took, I think I took a little bit of the Lingon Sour just down the wrong way. And uh, yeah, we've got Adam saying hello to uh, to Vanessa as well. So um, yeah, this this Lingon Sour though, it's really interesting. It's the Lingon berries give it a little bit of that kind of almost grapefruity type sour thing. But it's like if you mash up cherries, raspberries, strawberries, and a wee bit of cranberry. It's kind of if you take all of those fruits together, then give them the sort of grapefruity sour vibe it's really like that and it's it's got quite an unusual malt base in it this one i have to say as well so yeah it's got pilsner munich and uh, wheat malt in it which is quite unusual for a sour but it's not like a balloon of ice um at all to be honest with you but yeah hmm. so yeah let's kick off and have a little look at these um at these beers that um i've got for you so um, this is, as I say, the local Osmoskelit assortment uh, from Sistembol Agat um, for June of 2020. And I believe it was the, I can't remember if it was the 1st of June that these came out or if it was the 2nd of June. Honestly, can't remember. But yeah, first one that we have, oddly enough, is a Danish beer. And this is the only Danish one that I have in this lot. So this one is, uh, this is the Flying Couch Brewery from uh, Copenhagen over in Denmark. This one is really, um, this is a brewery that I really like, but um, not one that I've tried too many things from. I tried one of their beers ages ago and uh, really enjoyed it. And then they disappeared for maybe two, three years. I didn't see anything from them, but they now have, they started off as a gypsy brewery and now they have their own brewery. So their beers are fairly easy to get a hold of, but it's a Pilsner. And I have been finding myself getting a little bit more back into the laggers and things recently. So I thought, well, you know, Flying Couch, good Danish brewery. Why not have a little look at uh, why not have a little look at their pilsner? Yeah. So um yeah, that's beer number one. Um the next one 
that we have is a brewery that I haven't reviewed in a while as well. So this one is half Danish and half Swedish. And I think this one should be really quite interesting. Um, this one is a uh, this one is from Temple Breukus, who are in Uppsala, a little bit to the north of uh, Stockholm. And this is it brewed in collaboration with Ghost Brewing, who are from uh, from Denmark. And this is their Dragon, which they're describing as a bourbon oaked stout. So this one, I think, should be pretty interesting. It's only 7.3%. You know, for a bourbon oaked stout, you would usually want think you'd be getting something that was like, uh, you'd usually think you'd be getting something that is, you know, the 10 or 11% or something like that. So a 7.3% bourbon oak stout, that could be pretty interesting. Don't know if they'll have put oak chips or whatever in it rather than, you know, barrel aging it. But yeah, we need to see. Um, the next one, this is a brewery who are completely new to me as well. So um, yeah, this, I think, could be I think this one could be very interesting and I got this one just because it's a style of beer that I really enjoy so yeah this one is from Maria Torgid's microbreakery um and I don't know where they are from actually let's have a little look at this Maria Torgid's uh Maria Torgid's micro my power cable is being a pain in the arse guys I'm going to smash it in a minute let's see if it's microbreakery where are these guys um Okay, let's on to the Facebook page to find out. And it says they are from... Hmm, doesn't seem to have an address listed, does it? Um, no, that's strange, actually. Um, it does not have an address listed on their Facebook. And it doesn't have it on their website either, so I don't actually know where these guys are from. So yeah, maybe for the um, for the review, maybe for the review, I will actually have to contact the brewery and ask them for some proper information. Yeah, I don't know where these guys are from. It says it's got coffee in it from Johan and Neustrom. And I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling just from what I remember in Istanbul, I get there. Gothenburg somewhere and that wouldn't be surprising you know there's a hell of a lot of good beer in Gothenburgs uh we've got a few more comments so let's have a quick look at these uh, we've got MC stuttering Buddha yeah good evening Buddha where are you from you've been commenting on a few videos I'm curious whereabouts are you from um uh Mersey beers think the only lingonberry beer I've had was part of the North Sea Bridges collab that wouldn't yeah that wouldn't surprise me to be honest the lingonberries are definitely something that are used in sour beers the only the in Nordic beers actually the only other lingon beer I can think of would be like the Spontan series from Mikeller. Um, there's a triple lingon in there, so I maybe need to try that at some point. I do need to have a go at a few of. Uh, I need to have a go at a few of these um, different Spontan beers. There's a few in there that really interest me, actually. Um, so yeah, you will hopefully see some of those reviewed at some point. We've got Craig at Kent Beer Reviews watching as well. So yeah, guys, Craig is another uh, very nice beer reviewer. Um, Craig's reviews, um, one of my favourite things, as I've said a few times now about uh, Craig's channel, Craig does a lot of Portuguese beers because his wife and his wife's family are originally from uh, Madeira, that's it, they're originally from Fu uh, Funchal in Madeira. So uh, Craig used to do reviews back in the day, sitting on this beautiful rooftop. But he's got some very nice reviews on there. If you're interested in English craft beer, do go and show Craig some love. Go and give him a subscribe and watch some of his videos. They're very, very nice. I, I always, I tend to watch Craig's reviews when, uh, like, if he reviews a beer, if he's reviewed a beer already that I'm tasting, I tend to like to go and watch Craig's reviews after I've tried it myself. So uh, yeah, and we've got Mer we've got Adam saying cheers to Craig. We've got Kit. Uh, I'm saying back. Um, gypsy Brewery. I, I don't know. It could well be a Gypsy Brewery. There's a lot of Gypsy Breweries in uh, in Gothenburg, actually. So, yeah, that's quite the possibility. That is quite the possibility that it is a Gypsy Brewery. Wouldn't be surprised there. And uh, Buddha is from Canada. Oh, nice. Which province? Which province? Um, yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's keep going then with these beers then. So this is one that I think will be really interesting. So. Gothenburg Beer Bibliothek, but also brewed in collaboration with Brewski from Helsingbori, who are not from too far away from me. So this one is the Don't Look So Surprised Happy Birthday uh, Trucker. So yeah, number 283, according to their 
numbering system. And this one is a 7%er New England IPA. So, um, yeah, this one, um, this is one that, uh, uh, you know, this is one that I think should be really nice. You know, Brewski and uh, Beer Bibliotech, very, very, cute, you know, very, very capable uh, Swedish breweries, actually. So, um, yeah, we've got another Beer Bibliotech one for the next one. So, yeah, this one is actually half English, half Swedish. And this is a brewery that the likes of Craig and Adam are able to get a hold of fairly easily. The Beer Bibliotech and North Brewing, who are from Leeds in Yorkshire. So this one is the fancy meeting you here, and this one is a New England Sour IPA. So uh, this one, are, this is what it says on the side there. You can see New England Sipa. So um, yeah, this one I think should be uh, pretty interesting as well. No idea what to expect from this one, but um, yeah, I just kind of thought, you know, it's a beer bibliotech beer. It felt like a while since I'd done something from uh, from beer bibliotech because what always happens is I buy these beers and the beer bibliotech ones. I usually do them as one of the first ones because I, I really like beer bibliotech, one of my favourite Swedish breweries. And then uh, I forget, you know, it feels whenever the next month comes round, it feels like ages since I've done a beer bibliotech beer. So um, yeah. Oh, you've seen one of the beer bibliotech ones floating around. That's pretty cool. And uh, the Brewski one as well. That's kind of, yeah, no, that's interesting too. I have got another beer from Brewski, which you'll see in a minute, actually. So, um, yeah, no, it's good. It's good. If you come and visit, if um, Adam, if you come and visit over here, we can go up to Helsingborg and you can try some of the Brewski beers on tap. And they're really pretty nice, actually. So, um, yeah, our next one. Um, this is one that I'm very curious about. Uh, I don't know what to make of this. This one is a new collaboration between um, Dugas Brewery and Stillwater Artisanal. It's the first of a new series of hybrid beers that they're doing. So, uh, yeah, I was in two minds about whether to get this, but this one is a lactobacillus-based sour. It's a Verdeo wine. I don't know if that's like a Chilean wine. It sounds a bit more... Um, Chilean rather than like Spanish or anything like that and um, but it's got cloudberry sea buckthorn in it which should be an interesting combination and it's got oak barrels so I'm not sure I need to do a bit of research on this one I'll maybe message Mikel Duge and ask him you know should I drink this now or should I save this for a bit later because if you look at the color of it it is pretty damn light but uh, you know obviously these things can evolve over time and, uh, you know, it, the thing is, it would be quite a cool review to do, actually. Um, I'm not one, I have to admit, I don't really like ageing beers, to be honest with you. I always think that, um, apart from maybe barley wines, and I think you know, barley wines, I think, in my opinion, are they fairly dramatically. I don't find that, um, I don't find that, you know, ageing, uh, beers. I don't think it changes the flavour like massively, dramatically. Belgian beers it can a little bit, I suppose, quadruples, things like that. But yeah, barley wines, I think, are the big one for that. That's just me, of course. Other people will probably disagree with that a little bit. And uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to, for this one rather, this one, we're actually going to go to Kalmar. And this is a brewery called Engel. And I've had one or two of their beers recently, but it's been a good while since I've reviewed anything from the guys. This is their New England IPA. And I just thought, you know, they're releasing a New England. Um, these guys have got a very nice, more West Coasty type IPA as well, actually, um, which is definitely worth trying. So I just thought this is, a, you know, this one would be one that is worth checking out, actually. So, yeah, I think I will uh, quite enjoy this one. I need to review this one. I can see there's bottle conditioning here, too. So that will need to be reviewed fairly quickly actually um for the next one then we are actually going to go to brewski proper in helsingbori this is another ipa from these guys um it's a double dry hopped one so it's all about the details a 7.2 percent double dry hopped new england ipa so uh yeah these guys were one of the the big ipa producers these guys do you know they do a lot of berlin of ices and um and things like that as well so quite a nice uh, little brewery, I have to say. Um, so yeah, no, I like I like Brewski, and I always try to make sure I review at least one beer out of the new ones that they release every month. So uh, yeah, no, that's pretty awesome. That is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, no, that's eight of the beers so far. So that's eight of them. I quite like doing these little these um, 
well, I suppose unboxing or whatever videos. Uh, yeah, we've got a few more comments then. So uh, Adam's saying I'm drinking the Tropic Thunder, which also which is also a, oh I forgot Stillwater were involved in that. Yeah, um, Tropic Thunder I think is a regular in the Sea Stimble Agate range over here. Um, it was one of the first Dugas beers that I had actually. And I have to admit when I first tried it, I didn't like it that much. But I think now if I uh, tried it, I think, you know, that was when I, I first tried that when I was kind of starting to get into sour. So I think if I tried it now compared to when I originally reviewed it, it would probably, I'd probably give it a completely, I'd probably have a completely different perspective on it. So maybe that could be the first re-review that I'd ever do. I don't know. Um but yeah no Tropic Thunder is a very it's a very well respected beer that actually and um but yeah Dugas made their name with the big Imperial Stout. So Adam if you ever come across one that's called Egit I D J I T that's one of their um original beers as well because it was the stouts and the sour beers that this brewery really became famous for. So uh yeah. Mm. So, um, oh yeah, we've got Nigel. Ni I've noticed Nigel's commented on one or two things. Someone shared your channel on Reddit and watched a lot of videos since. No, that's awesome. I mean, the support's always, uh, the support's always appreciated. I'm not in it for the, um, I'm not always, uh, you know, I've never, always, I've never been in it for the numbers and things like that. So it was really quite random. I had my day off and then I checked the channel just to see how the day's video was going. And the thing had jumped about two, three hundred subscribers. And then there was loads of comments like Reddit, 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 Reddit. And I was like, what? I was just like, you know, what the fuck is this? And um, yeah, then someone had shared this in, uh, you know, the deep, dark, uh, what is it? Deep into YouTube, I think the thread was. and. Um, it just apparently it's like the second top of all time within at least the last time I looked, it was the second top of all time in uh, that particular subreddit, which is apparently quite big. I've never used Reddit because I know that I would, you know, lose so much time if I did that. But the whole Reddit thing was just mental. But yeah, it's cool to see new followers coming along and um, enjoying the videos. So, um, yeah, no, that's cool. Um, have you had Rothouse Pills? Yes, I used to drink that a lot. My review of that one was one that I filmed in Heidelberg when I lived in Germany, because that is a Baden-Württemberg beer. It's actually owned by the uh, Baden-Württemberg state government. Um, so, yeah, you can search. If, if you're not sure if I've done a beer, just go into the homepage and search the name. Um, just put Rothaus into the, the search bar on the homepage and you'll find them. I think I've done all three, actually. There was three different beers. There was the Pills, there was the Weizen, and I think there was another one as well. There was a few. There was, they had a Radler. I, never, I didn't review the Radler, but I definitely reviewed the Pills because the Pills was the, the green one. I reviewed the Weizen, which I think was the orange one, and there is another review in there as well. I'm not sure if that could have been a Bock or something like that, but yeah, Rothaus Pills classic wee beer that I've not had one of those in ages come to think of it actually maybe in the red is the red one the pills actually come to think of it because I know there's the green one the tannin zapful but I can't remember if that's Hellas or if it yeah the tannin zapful or Rothaus beers are, are very very nice they've got the local woman on the front I forget what her name is but yeah the, the tannin zapful Rothaus beers are very um are very good as well, actually. So, uh, yeah, no, I have reviewed that one. So just check the German playlist. Remember, you can search for the beers in the channel as well. Adam's saying uh, so much fruit in it, really nice. I, oh, yeah, no, I've, I, as I say, I, I don't remember the Tropic Thunder so well because we get quite a few different sour beers from there. But Tropic Thunder, you'll see that on the shelves regularly um, over here. If you come over here and visit Adam, I'll take you to a symbol lag and let you see what it's like. Um... Craig's like, oh, can someone share one of my videos on Reddit? Go and do it. You go into my thread and just, and or, well, not my thread. It's not my thread. The thread that's got mine on it and just uh, do a shame. Do a, a, there was someone did that. They shared their own channel, like shameless, shameless plug here. Um, so they did that. Um, but yeah, you can do that if you want, Craig. That's fine. But yeah, guys, go and show Craig some love. He's got a really nice uh, beer review channel. Adam mainly does uh, live streams and things like that. He's more into doing the live streams and things like that. And then I just saying, yeah, it's called the Deep Deep in YouTube thread. And uh, yeah, and uh, James, a power cable. I wish this HP smart adapter thing would just ram it. Um, but yeah, it's um, like that you feature so many good German beers, including those in Bamberg. I love it there. Uh, Heron Pills. Oh yeah, I do like a good Heron Pills. 
that is a nice one. And Marbroy are uh, brilliant in my opinion. You know, I do like Marbroy. I need to review a few more of their things. Um, I'd love to do. Um, I don't know how easy it would be to say. It would be awesome to do. Uh, I think uh, one I'd love to go over there with Peter the Clueless Drinker. He is like me. Peter used to live well. Peter used to live in Regensburg. I lived in Heidelberg. I studied in Heidelberg, and uh, you know, Pete, Peter and I are both massive fans of the traditional German beers. So I'd love to go over there and do some filming with him. Do like a kind of vloggy type thing, and you know, go. We'd probably do a wee crawl around the. The, the the breweries there and just do a tasting and things and film a little bit. I think that would be awesome. And of course, my friend Daniel, who was the one that got me into beer with the likes of Schlenkerla, um, he'd probably join in with a few of them as well. It's always nice to have the the German perspective in there as well. But yeah, no, I, I'm a big fan of German beer. I do wish that I could get um, more of it kind of more regularly if you like. So maybe I need to uh, I need to take a van across on the ferry from Trelleborg or something. It's very close, actually. I maybe need to do that and just bring a load of uh, German stuff back. Maybe do that once a year or something like that and bring a few crates back. Um, it's always good to go over there and kind of keep my German fairly good as well. Um, but, yeah, uh, Adam's saying that he thinks my... Yes, no, my router definitely does have COVID. I'm furious about that. Actually getting pissed off with this internet now. I've been on to the internet company a few times to get this shit sorted out, and they're just useless. They're actually just <clears throat> really getting furious with these guys now. It just pisses me off a lot. Um, yep, there we go. But, uh, yeah, got to go but keep it up. Yeah, James, no, nice to have you on, and uh, I hope you enjoy some of the other... Uh, some of the other reviews in the future so yeah no it's good um stop for me yeah no it's definitely gone it's the yeah adam you you cursed it it was your fault it actually did properly cut out there i don't know my internet's normally pretty good it's something to do with the i think it's something to do with the routers because there's there's like three different networks for some reason coming out of the router so i need to play with it and uh, and try because there's an external there's a an external one then there's a 5g and then there's a 6.2 and i think it keeps changing its mind on where the 5g network goes it's just it's a fucking pain in the arse to be quite honest so um yeah no it's just a pain it's just a pain in the arse but um yeah no window thomas is saying hi craig's saying are you in a basement yeah my my apartment is a ground floor apartment so uh yeah, kind of almost it's one of these little half ones that's like half underground half um half basement if you like so uh yeah um <laughs> how are you seeing his back are your are your broadband providers belgian no because if it was belgian it would fucking work 
Um, I only buy Belgian broadband. <laughs> oh, dear Harry, you're a terrible man, but we love you anyway. So, um, yeah, now let's just crack this off. Mm. But, yeah, what I might do later is the 5G network is better through in my bedroom. I sit in my kitchen just now. Um, so I'll probably move later on. Once I've gone through the beers and things like that, I will probably fire through to my bedroom in a bit, and then we can use the 5G network. I don't know why it does that. Sometimes in the kitchen it picks up the 5G. Otherwise, it just does the thing. The Internet's a bit messy, to be honest. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, where were we? Right, okay. Next one then. This one actually wasn't part of the local in Smoskoli. This one is the, uh, this is just a brewery that I really like, and it's one of their regular beers. I tried the Dolphin Love from these guys before, and it was really, really nice. Um, so, um, yeah, no, it's, this is a brewery that I really like. These guys are from Ekeru, just to the southwest of Stockholm. And um, they mainly started off as Nordic Kiwi brewers, used only um, New Zealand hops. And uh, this is one of the regular beers that I'm very curious about, Crossing Divide. So it's got Columbus uh, from America, Motoika, and uh, Nelson Sovin from New Zealand, and American Simcoe as well. So I think this one will be a little bit special to try. Um, this one was a request. And I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out. So this is from a brewery in Malmö called South Plains. Um, and this is one of their Funky Land series. So this beer is called the Big Kahuna. And it's a sour mango passion hibiscus beer, actually. So, um, yeah, it's quite... Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this one. South Plains, I had one of their beers a good while ago. And, uh, you know, it was okay. But I'm not sure if the sour beers will be... Um, will be a bit different, actually. So we need to see about this one. This was a request, though, from a, a follower. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, yeah, this is one that I'm curious about. So this is a brewery that... Um, this is a brewery that are uh, quite well respected in Gothenburg, but I've just not reviewed too many beers from them. So I kind of thought, well, you know, I really need to do another one from these guys. So Vega Brewery, and this is their... What's the beer actually called? This is the Deep Sea Imperial Porter, 8.5% ABV. So hopefully this turns out to be pretty nice. I do like the artwork on it, though. I think the artwork is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, Vega Brewery, quite well respected, as I say. But, um, yes, um, we've got another one here. This is a sour brewery from the kind of Gothenburg area as well. And this is a beer that a lot of people have said. It's very good. So it's the Morian Dogen's Deadhead. This one's been available through the likes of glass banking and things for um, for quite a wee while. But uh, we are only just getting it through System Bolaget. So I thought, well, really need to review this one for the uh, the System Bolaget release. So, um, yes, another one from Northern Exposure. This one, the dark side of the room, Baltic Porter. So I've only ever had you know, laggers and IPAs from Northern Exposure. So I just thought, you know, I really need to have a go at this beer. Um, and it's a New Zealand hot porter as well. It's got Pacific Gem in it. So I think that'll make it um, pretty interesting. But cocoa, coffee, oak and Pacific Gem. So hopefully this turns out to be as good as the Dolphin Love or the um, or what I think Crossing Borders is going to turn out like as well. So, um, yeah. Anyway, time to crack open another beer for this one. So I'm having another one of my landlord's home brews. This is his Belgian wit beer. I've got the, the these two just kind of matured, uh, so they're ready. Uh, they are ready now, and I've not tried these two yet. So I thought, well, let's do a little bit of these on the, the live stream. I've not had a Belgian wit in uh, a good long while, actually. I think it was the Prima. Was it the Prima Verde was the last one I had? Oh, there we go. Nope. It's decided to explode. That's not good. Yeah. I hate it when that shit happens, man. It's actually behaving itself now. There we go. But yeah, you can see it went a bit crazy in the beginning. But yeah, let's put it in. Sit it down. That's always the risk with Belgian beers. That was me making an amateur mistake and forgetting that Belgian beer is capable of things. Belgian beer. Belgian beer. 
So, uh, yeah, this one is quite nice. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we've got a few more comments here. Uh, um, we've tried that, and it's actually, it's it's all right. Um, as I say, the confusion seems to be between the networks. Um, it needs reconfigure, I think. Fat Pilgrim killed our phone line and internet on Tuesday. BT only fixed it. Yeah, that's what uh, BT, I think, were usually pretty good. Um, we always had good BT internet in Aberdeen, at least. Um, but, yeah, if it's taken them a while... Uh, to fix it, then that's not obviously not good. <laughs> uh, Vanessa saying hi, hi, nice to have you again, Vanessa. And uh, proper labeling, yeah. No, um, Matthias has a friend who is a graphic designer, and she did uh, the labels for him actually. So he's got different coloured ones for uh, for each beer. He's got the template, so he can just change the name of the beer down the uh, down the side there, which is pretty cool. And uh, how is that Belgian beer? Belgian beer? Yeah, Harry's better at the whole Belgian thing than I am, though. So. <laughs> okay but yeah um yeah let's see how this one is but you can see the heads calm down a little bit now looks like a proper belgian wit belgian wit um belgian wit does it smell belgian it does smell belgian in it mm, not as good as the firm in it i need to take this to the firm boys and get them all fired up before we play something before the arsenal game in it gunners but yeah it smells pretty nice i have to say though now I've said this like last year, um every year my landlord Matthias he does like a little um his own beer festival thing out in the garden and stuff, which is it's just craziness, it's awesome. Um but he um last year his laggers were really good, but his ales this year seem to have really kind of caught up in things. So um yeah, looking forward to the, the beer festival this year. But I need to see if I'm actually able to be there because I'm hoping that the Japanese border opens up in July. So um maybe I'll actually have I'll end up over in Japan. We'll need to see. That is pretty solid. That's good. I like for a you know Belgian wet it's not a style that everybody likes. But um no, I can I can enjoy these every so often. I do enjoy a wheat beer every so often. They are more tasters for me. I used to love Hefeweizens before um before I went to live in Germany, I used to be able to drink them, you know, fairly regularly. But, um, you know, I found that they did become more tasting beers for me as time went on. So, yeah. Mm. Anyway, more beers. So, yeah, um, these two I'll show you together, actually. Because I think these will be quite interesting. So, um, Opie Gord's Brewery, they've done a heritage series recently. So, we have... The Hedemora Pilsner and the Hedemora Dunkel. So they do have a Hefeweizen as well, which has an orange label. But um, yeah, these were released, I think, I can't remember, were these released back in May or something? But um, yeah, I just kind of thought, you know, I wanted to try these and uh, and see what they were all about. Um, I do enjoy a good Pilsner beer. I've been getting really into my laggers again recently. Um and, you know, Opigords is a brewery who I've always really quite liked. They were one of the first Swedish brewers that I ever tried. The very first beer I had from them was the India Tribute, which I thought was really nice. And that's, I, I do enjoy that one. I mean, the Turbo Double IPA is still like a classic West Coast IPA. The Turbo Stout is still an awesome Imperial Stout, in my opinion. Opigords from uh, Dalarna County. Uh, further up north in Sweden. I really quite like those guys. Um, they're doing some really nice stuff. And I do like it, the fact that they're still experimenting more. They are a fairly big brewery these days. They invested a hell of a lot of money in an Italian brew kit, and it took them ages to get it to uh, to work, actually. So that was one of the weird things about it. Um, but yeah, for this one, we go to Gothenburg, OO Brewing. Um, so these guys released two beers, the Nova IPA, and they also released the another one of the 50-50. So this particular one is Simcoe and Equinot. Um, I wasn't able to get the Nova. I need to keep an eye on the web shop and see if I can order one of those. Um, because it just from someone was telling me that System Bolaga are doing their ordering system in another way now, which makes it um, you know, it makes it very difficult. So yeah, I think I think it was actually um, Hannes from Nerd Brewing was telling me they've changed the way they do it. So I wasn't able to get Nova yet, unfortunately, but I was able to get the 50-50. 
So, uh, yeah, we've got a few more comments now. So Harry's saying it tastes like the sweat of an EIE member. Well, you would know, babe. You would know. Um, yep, and Harry and Craig are saying hello to each other. It's all good. So, um, yeah, I have to say, Belgian wit, I need. I really, you know, I've had a number of people asking me to do a review of Whole Garden, so that's one that I really do need to kind of nip in the bud. It's been years, I think, since I've, uh, I've drank that beer. But, yeah, recommend me some other Belgian wits as well. Whole Garden is one. That I need to uh, to uh, to get off the list. Am I remember this whole garden? I don't know. I've got it in my head. The whole garden. I can't remember if that's Belgian or no. It's actually it's actually Belgian. For some reason, I had it in my head that that was a Dutch beer. Um, obviously, the the name is obviously uh, Flemish, which will make it sound like Dutch. So yeah. Hmm. I have to say, I think Matthias has got a solid Belgian wit here. I mean it. It's actually it's quite a yeasty leaning one. This, um, I've always, that's the main difference. I mean, I've always found that Belgian beer is very very yeast forward, whereas the German one is a little. Bit, you know, the German ones are obviously a bit more kind of balanced than that. But I do like the kind of yeast forward nature, if you like, of um, of the Belgian beers. Um, but yeah, this is nicely done. So looking forward to this beer festival. There's a few. There's a couple of double IPAs that will be ready in two weeks' time. So maybe on my next hangout, I'll try the two um, double IPAs that uh, Matthias has made as well. So keep an eye out for that. Mm. So um, yeah, we still got a few more beers to look at. So um, yeah, the next one. This is this is one that I'm very very curious about actually. Um, so this guy, this one is an Imperial Pills, if I remember it, it is an Imperial Pills. Um, da, 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 da. But yeah, no, this is one. This is from the Julia Labs series. So Julia Brewery, you've seen me review a good number of their beers before actually, um, and this one I forget. This is is it called the Hingen? It's an India. Yeah, sorry, it's an IPL. India Pale Lager, and it's a collaboration brew with a brewery called Vistatha Brewery, who are from, oh, they're away over by, like, Eastad or Trelleborg somewhere. They're away on the south coast, at the very, very south, southern tip of Skona somewhere. So I'm really curious to see what this beer is like. You don't see too many India Pale Lagers these days, but um, Hule Brewery, they're very, very capable. I found when it comes to the the Pilsner and the Lager style of beer, so um, yeah, and Vistatha. This is another brewery who I've never featured on the channel before, so uh, that will be another interesting thing. So another brewery that I've got to research a little bit. So um, yeah, the next one. This is another brewery who will be new to the channel this month as well. Varabuke, Varabuke Brewery. So this one is the Tokyo Lager, and uh, I'm, I'm a big, fa I'm a bit of a fan of the uh, the Japanese lager beers. So I just thought, you know, with the name Tokyo Lager, if it's modelled on a Japanese lager, I think, you know, this one I think will be very, very interesting. I'm not sure where these guys are from. Let me just stick this into Google and see if I'll book it. Yeah. Or oh, no, I need to change to the Swedish keyboard. There we go. Varbuk. Yeah. Can't spell it. Varbuk. Yeah. Really good. There we go. These guys are from a little place called Elmholt. And let's use the magic of Google Maps. Where is that? Oh, it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's actually it's not too far away. Um, mm. But yeah, no, it is pretty much in the middle of nothing. <laughs> it's like pretty much if you go north an hour or so of Krihwanstad. It looks as if it's about an hour away from Krihuanstad in Skona. It looks, is that, is that Smoland? I think that is actually in Smoland County, but yeah, it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. There's no big cities around that at all. It's like, it's about halfway between Lund and Vekwe almost. So yeah, these guys are from the middle of absolutely nowhere by the looks of it. So uh, yeah, that's interesting. That'll be an interesting beer for us to try. Um, the next one. Let me just bring the StreamYard thing back. Um, so, yeah, we've got another one from Rocket Brewing, who originally started out in Copenhagen, 
But of course, now they have gone to uh, to Malmö. So this one is called the Hokkaido and Shiso, and it's a barley wine. So yeah, these guys actually, um, I think Kim Agersten, who is the brewer, he and I are going to see about doing a uh, Meet the Brewer at some point. They were interested in doing one as well. So you will see Rocket Brewing do a Meet the Brewer thing. I think Kim is actually Danish, if I remember correctly. I'm sure he's Danish. But um, yeah, this one, um, I'm curious about this. This is another one of their kind of Japanese series of beers that they're doing, actually. So curious to see what this one has in store for us. It says that this is a barley wine with pumpkin. Um, and shiso, get the, it says the pumpkin gives it a smooth honey type flavour. And um, the shiso gives you a little bit of a, herb, a herbal and sort of almond type thing to it as well so this one will be a really interesting review i think very very quirky so um yes we've got another few comments that i should look at as well so um yeah lee is saying hello lee has kind of joined the channel quite recently as well so it's nice to have lee watching us and we have my finished beer mule riku it's nice to see you again um so but yeah riku doing very well doing very well I've um, just reviewed another one of your Finnish beers before we came online. So you will see that one. Um, you will see another Finnish review airing tomorrow, actually. So you can look forward to that. You can look forward to that. Um, so, yep, lots of, uh, lots of, and that was quite an interesting beer, I have to say. Um, and it was one that you gave me information on recently as well. So, yeah, you will hopefully enjoy that that review tomorrow. Um, if it, if I remember, I need to remember to uh, to upload that actually. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see what's going on with this. My computer's going a little bit crazy at the moment, guys. Um, but yeah, Craig and Riku are saying hello to each other. Um, Harry's saying he's got a Keys and Zago Zagovor beer. Oh, what that'll be interesting, Harry. I say. <laughs> Well, as Harry's saying a session barley wine ale, which means it will be about eighteen percent or something. Harry's session ales are always. Uh, Harry's session heels are always very, very high alcohol, which is great. Um, evening from the uh, on the uh, Omnipoil Hard Seltzer, Chris uh, Bullman. So Bullman is another, uh, he's a newbie actually to the, the beer tubing scene. So make sure you go and check out his channel, guys. Give him a little bit of love and give him a few subscribers and uh, things like that. I've watched one or two of his videos so far and he's doing a nice job. So it's going to be interesting to see how... Um, how he develops over the next uh, over the next little while. So go and give Bullman a little uh, a little subscribe as well, and you can uh, and you can you can see some interesting videos there as well. So uh, yeah, Riku is saying I think I'll have a double milk stout from my Stila next. Oh, that would be interesting if uh, yeah we didn't the two my Stilas that I had were sours. I still need to review the, the second one actually, but yeah, let me know how that one is. That could be one maybe for the next box actually, if that's any good to the double milk stout. I always enjoy a big, uh, you know, a big sweet stout as well. Actually, I love a good barley wine. Me too. Love a good barley wine. Harry's saying the session barley wines are the best, but Har Harry, every barley wine is a session for you, man. I, I really don't know how you do it, man. I really don't know. Um, and, um, which one is that Craig's talking about? The hard seltzer. Ah, yeah. I've never tried a hard seltzer, I have to say. So um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, seltzer is one I need to try. Anything above 11.5% is a session, by the way. Uh, no worry, <laughs> no worries. It's always good to give a shout out. It's always good to share the love. If you want to join us on the stream, by the way, um, I think I'm not friends with you on Facebook yet. Actually, we need to sort that. Add me on Facebook, um, and uh, I'll get Harry. Uh, Harry can send the link over to you because I know that you've got contact with Harry, so you can join us if you like on the stream once I open it up. Um, but yeah, they're saying do not know how, what a waste of water. Yep. I would kind of agree with that, to be honest. If it's not Belgian, it's shite. No, absolutely, Harry. That is just the law. If it's not Belgian, it's shite. I have to agree. Uh, I think it's safe to say uh, this will be the worst Omnipoil I've ever had. Uh, I don't know. I've not tried it. You know, the thing was, with Omnipoil being a Swedish brewery, you'd be surprised at how few of their beers they actually release here in Sweden. Um, you guys, I think, probably get a better variety of Omnipoil than we do. Um, I think Denmark, you know, I can go across to Denmark and get more Omnipoil 
um, over there than I can through System Bolag in Sweden. It's just the whole paperwork thing. They've got to register the beer about four months in advance to actually have it sold here in Sweden. Um, at least that's what Hannes from uh, Nerd Brewing was uh, was telling me as well. So yeah, um, yeah, my first and last hard seltzer. I don't blame you there, Craig. I don't blame you. I need to try a few in America. Maybe there's a few good ones in America, but we'll just need to wait and see. Hmm. But yeah, let's look at the last of these beers then. So um, this is another Gotland brewery who I've never tried anything from yet. There's quite a few nice breweries over there in Gotland. I need to get over there and have a look because it's supposed to be a beautiful part of the country. Uh, I pretty much I bought this one because of the name. So Bergsvig's Brewery. And this one is a whiskey stout. So I just kind of thought, well, that might, that might be quite cool. It's a brewery I've never heard of. and it's a some sort of whiskey still. I don't know if there is a whiskey distillery over there on um on Ireland these days. But you know, I thought it might be quite cool for this brew to have a Scottish guy reviewing their whiskey stout actually. And they've spelt it in the Scottish way as well. So I'm guessing if they've done this, it must be a Scotch whiskey barrel that it's been aged in. Because remember, if it's W H I S K E Y, it's not Scottish. If it's W H I S K Y like this, it has to be Scottish. So, um, yeah, that's the rule. That's the rule about the whiskey. Um, yes, for this one, we are going to go... Harry loves the name of this. I know that Harry that's watching, he loves the name of this brewery. This is Pang Pang, which is the Swedish way of saying bang bang. So, um, yeah, this is Pang Pang Brewery, an imperial stout, barrel-aged imperial stout, this one. I think this one was quite pricey, and it comes in at a very Harry sessionable 11.5% ABV. So, yeah, respect wood it's called um so yeah this is a this is actually the oldest craft brewery in stockholm believe it or not these guys have been on the go for quite a while but they've only started to grow fairly um recently to be honest with you but uh, pang pang um this is a brewery that i think when i make it over to england at some point and do my little english tour i will see if i can try and get one of the beers at least from these guys to uh, to let you try. And these things are very interesting. I found that with this brewery, they're very light in the mouth feel. I think they do need to kind of make their mouth feel a bit thicker and things. But um, the flavour, they're always pretty well packed with flavour, actually. So, yeah. Um, the next ones I have, these, yeah, this is a, another brewery who I haven't, pardon me, sorry. This is another brewery who I haven't heard anything of before. So, new shipping. Brewer. I've got two beers from these guys. So this one um, is called Palace Pills. And I just got this because, well, I quite like lagers. I've been enjoying lagers recently. And this one is called Equinot. Call this IPA. So an Equinot forward um, IPA. And Equinot, as we know, is a lovely kind of limey type pop. So hopefully that turns out quite nicely. I like trying beers from breweries that I've not tried anything from before. And the thing is, in Sweden, you can do this quite safely because the stand, because of the home brewing culture that we have here, the standard of all these new beers tends to be really pretty high, actually. So, yeah. Um, and um, this one, ah, yeah. This one is a collaboration, Broikus Niton, who are from, is it, I forget if these guys are from Karlsham or Krona. But they're from Blakinge anyway, they're from Blakinge. And um, this is a collaboration with Secret Sisters Brewing, who are from, they are from Malmö, actually. They're very, very small, kind of gypsy brewery. They do collaborations and stuff like that. Underneath the um, the Gustav Adolfstorg um, Bishop's Arms name went out of my head, the Bishop's Arms. That's the kind of almost Witherspoons type pubs that you have in uh, in Sweden. And um, there is a little nano brewery down there, little tiny, tiny nano brewery. And uh, the likes of Secret Sisters and Elma Live. And there's quite a few very, very small gypsy brewers based in uh, in Malmö who do beers down there. But this one is a pink boots blend, actually. So I need to read up a little bit more on this beer and then get that one reviewed. But Secret Sisters are... Uh, Quite interesting, actually. I've done uh, that's this will be the first time they're featuring on the channel as well. But Brukus Niton, of course, have some um, some very interesting things as well. So um, yes, these beers actually bar one 
um, those are all the ones that I bought on the um, Locale dos Mosca League assortment of uh, June 2020. So yeah, had quite a few. Um, let me see what is the what's going on with the comments just now. So uh, yeah, Harry is saying, Mr. Eel, you better watch out. I uh, still can't believe that White Claw is now in Morrison's. What a waste of shelf space. <laughs> uh, actually want to review it. I don't even, I've actually never tried White Claw as well. Um, just don't see see it down south, you know. Um, in the middle of nowhere, session ale. Yep, everyone, everything wants in the can. And uh, what are we saying? Just swind and at least pick up the beers while you're there. Um but yeah, Mersey beers might do it this weekend, to be honest. And uh, yeah, now we have Christoph. Christoph is going to join us in the feed in a few minutes as well when I when I open it up. But um, yeah, so I actually, um, as I, uh, as you maybe would have seen, I recorded my first um, kind of brewery interview sort of thing. And unfortunately, we 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 tried to choose the the quietest part of the brewery, and because obviously you've got lots of cooling fans and stuff in there to keep the temperature down. But uh, apart from the kind of slightly background noise, I think it actually went very very well. But um, Hannes actually was very kind and gave me quite a few beers to review. And one of them is in the fridge, so I won't show that one probably. But um, yeah, he gave me. Uh, Hannes from Nerd Brewing gave me a few things. So we're going to have a little look at, uh, at some of these ones. So, yeah, this is the first one that he gave me, Nerd Brewing, uh, Lila Ulfabriken. This one is an organic citrusy zesty saison, so not sure what to expect from this. We'll just need to see um, how that turns out. But he also, you know, Nerd Brewing, of course, are very well known for their Imperial Souts, which are Harry Meadows session strength. Um, so this one I actually did buy through the Localt or Smoskolid assortment. So this one um, is this one came was one that I actually bought. So this one, the Override, which is the Imperial Chocolate Milkshake Stout, ten point five percent ABV. And I tell you something, it's got a hell of a. If you watch my video, you see how he does the waxy things. This one got a hell of a runoff, actually. So, uh, yeah, no, that was quite funny, I have to say. Um, but, uh, yeah, 10.5% Imperial Milk Stout. And knowing this brewery, I think this beer will be pretty damn special, actually. But after that interview, I need to actually go and um, and update my, my notes, actually, on it. Because he told me some very interesting things that I need to put in there. Um, but these next three beers are ones that he gave me. Uh, to review um so yeah this is one that extends vietnamese coffee edition so he said well you need to have this one because you're a big fan of the um you know you need to have the the coffee edition of this so the extends and um, this is their imperial stout that they've had for a very long time and he basically just adds different adjuncts to this i've got a feeling that this was this is a version of the first nerd brewing beer that i ever tried actually so, um, yeah, no, this is a, an edition of the, the first Nerd Brewing beer, the Vietnamese coffee edition. So this one should be really special. As I've told you on the channel before, I've really been enjoying a lot of, um, you know, a lot of these kind of coffee stouts and uh, and things like that recently. So I'm really, really curious about this one. Um, this one that he gave me, he did tell me that this was going to be a Sistembo Lagat release later in the year. So I need to speak to him and get the date off this, but I will review this probably quite soon and then just release it later. But this is another Imperial um, Milk Stout, actually. So yeah, the Infix, 10.8% Imperial Milk Stout. So I'm really curious. This one's the Caramel Macchiato edition. So... Uh, yeah, very, very curious to see what this one's all about as well. Some of these beers, you know, the Nerd Brewing beers, he's, he loves Imperial Stouts, Hannes. So I think this one is going to be just absolutely um, insane. And this is one, I was a bit cheeky with this one because I asked him, I just saw this, I saw the box with the label on it. And I just said to him, you know, this is really unusual. Can I, can, can I have one of those to review? And he was like, yeah, sure. So this one, an Imperial Wheat Stout, it's just called This. So, um, yeah, this is one, an 11% wheat stout. I think this will be really interesting. And it's aged on hickory as well. So the the barrel aging kind of qualities in this, I think, will be 
a little bit um, different as well. I tell you what, for the very last beer, just give me a second and I will show you the other one that you gave me too. So wait one second. So, yes. This is the last one that he gave me. Um, so, yeah, this is actually going to be released, I think he said, next month. And this is a collaboration between Chad Beer and Elm 11. Because actually, Nerd Brewing is one of the brands of a brewery company. There's Lila Ulf Fabrik and Chad Beer and Nerd Brewing are all the one company now, but it's three separate brands. And uh, this is called the Elements Double Dry Hop Lager. So, this one, I think. Uh, will be a very, very interesting review as well. So I need to update my notes on Chad Beer, and I've been in contact with uh, Elma Levin on... Uh, I've been in contact with Elma Levin on Instagram, and I think he's going to help me with my brewery notes as well. So, um, yeah, that's the last of the beers that I want to show you today, actually. So what we'll do now, then, um, I hope, you know, you guys have enjoyed this. I just think this is an interesting thing. A lot of people seem to really enjoy the whole... Um, unboxing sort of thing. So, um, yeah, we've got a few other comments here as well. But yeah, Harry's saying he's got some Nerd Brewing. <coughs> yeah, no, Nerd Brewing. Hannes was telling me that he'd sold to, I want to say it was Hoptimism. I can't remember if it was Hoptimism, but I'm sh I've got a feeling that's what he said to me. He was telling me that he um, had exported some beers to, to Hoptimism, actually. Um, Nerd Brewing, currently the number one Swedish brewery, as per Untapped. Yes, they are. Um, I think uh, Hannes was saying that he's still the number one brewery unless you count the meaderies. But then again, there's that whole question, is mead beer or is it something else? But yeah, um, the Imperial um, Blueberry Pie Stout my mate got for me. Yep, um, that was one I've not tried yet, actually. It was, um, he had a few bottles of that in the brewery. But he'd already given me so much, so I didn't want to be cheeky. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, all this, all those stouts from their brewing are the uh, are at the Shipley Triangle and Rob's Neck. There was, you know, Rob was saying that that he tried um, tried some of the Nerd Brewing stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll get we'll make sure we get some Nerd Brewing for you guys as well. Also available at Bottles and Books in Bristol. Who's Whose bar is that? Does that not belong to one of the breweries? I'm sure that belongs to like Wiper and True or something like that. I'm sure that belong that that's a collaboration between some of the Bristol breweries and things like that. But um, yeah, you'll know, check it out. And um, yeah, they ship everywhere. They ship everywhere. Right? Yeah. No. So guys, let's do this thing. We'll open this up now, and we'll get people in. Let me just take the link, and I'll share this in the. Has it shared? Uh, so yeah, let's get this shared, guys. But yeah, um, as I say, I did this first. Um, how do you say, the first uh, meet the brewery type thing. And it was really fun to do, actually. So I've got another few breweries in Skona that I've been talking to. And when I go home to Scotland and things, I will try and talk to, um, uh, you know, um, I will try and talk to a few Scottish ones as well and see if we can do some, um, some interviews down there as well. So let me just put this link into the... YouTubers group, we'll get that there. I need to send this to Krzysztof as well, because I think he's not in that group. We probably should add him to it. But um, yeah, so guys, um, here we go. Let's just jump in whenever you feel. Let me just put this beer back in the fridge and then we will crack on. We'll crack on. So yeah, that's always a good thing when your headset kind of crashes and lands on the floor. <laughs> so yeah, let me just bring this over here and we'll get a little bit more comfortable, of course, because my babe's Harry, my babe's Harry is coming on in a wee minute. So he and I are, uh, he and I are going to obviously get on as we always do. Um, I'll put, I need to put the link in the chat with the Dutch guys as well in case they want to join. Where are we? There we go. So yeah, I think that is everyone should have the link. Uh, oh, Adam, we need to give it to Adam as well. Give it to Adam. Um, so yeah, anytime you guys want to join, just go for it. But there we go. But yeah, no, the um, the what do you call it? The oh, 
meet the brewery kind of thing was really interesting. I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, I've got a few other breweries um, in mind for that. And uh, we'll see how that goes over the next little while. As I say, I want to film a few with the Scottish breweries. And uh, hopefully we can make that happen the next time I, pardon me, go home. So we'll see. Yeah, and we've got, oh, Christoph is here already. Christoph is here. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, hello. Christoph, can... Yeah, I can hear you, no problem. Hold him down. Ah, I've muted my computer, so that's that's <laughs> why. That's why I couldn't hear you. Right, okay, yeah, because it always makes weird noises. How are you, Christoph? Oh, I'm fine, fine. First, Good. Uh, nice. days off, uh, you know, for a while, so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's been ages since we were on a hangout, actually. Yeah, so it's nice. It's nice to have you on. It was cool that you could join. Yeah, it, it is quite uh, difficult to have a, a night off, you know, when you're doing only nights. Oh right, yeah, yeah. No, I remember, I remember that you work in the. You, what is it? I forget what it is you actually work in again. Is it a warehouse that you work in? No, care home. A care. Ah, right. Yeah, okay. key worker. Yes. Key worker, ah, so you've not been on the lockdown or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you might you must be you must be just absolutely dead just now with all of that. Yeah, recently, on, recently yeah. I've done uh, seven nights in a row, so yeah. Mm. It is intense. Mm. I can imagine. I can imagine, yeah. But yeah, guys, for those of you who don't know, Christoph is uh is Polish, lives in near Newcastle. In the northeast yeah, of England. Did, yeah. um, how long is it you've been doing Ale Degustation now? Uh, about four years. Yeah, I know. That, yeah, yeah, I remember. I kind of remember when you started up, actually, yeah, because I think we were on a hangout with Dean, maybe. And yeah. uh, I think that was maybe the first time we were on, because we never managed, when I was in Durham for that time, we never managed to arrange something to actually meet up. Uh, which was unfortunate. Um, well, you've been very busy. Oh yeah, no, I've been, <laughs> have been pretty damn busy as well. But yeah, guys, um, Christoph has a very, very nice beer channel as well. Go and show him some love. Give him some subs and check out his uh, his videos and stuff like that. Um, Christoph is very, very close to Wylam Brewery, which is very popular these days. So yeah. something that, yep. Yeah, so something that I think we need to arrange, Christoph, is that um, I've been talking to like Harry and Adam and all of these guys and saying that we need to do like, a, I, I was wanting to do a little bit of an England tour. So, you know, do some of the breweries in Bristol, like Manchester, London and things. So it'd be quite cool to do like a, a Wylam, you know, go to the Wylam with you and do some. Yeah, you know what? Filming and things. Actually, it's quite rich in the uh, breweries. You have uh, Elam Brewery, the Teesside Brewery. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, there are small ones. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's loads of them now. I think it'd be. I think to do it'd be cool to do the Wylam one. I think. Yeah. We'll take off with, but we can do. Yeah, we should do some on location filming as well. We've got Adam joining us as well from Mersey Beer Reviews. So yeah, cool. Nice. Hello, to see you, Adam. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Um, it's be. I. It's. Uh, it's just nice. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Streams it feels like like two or three weeks I think since I've hosted everything the last seems, one. Everything seems long in the lockdown. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's just uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just we we don't have lockdown in Sweden, but I just the last week I've just felt dead. Like I got my, I was working. I was doing studying alongside it. I found I've passed all my classes, and I'm in that point just now where I'm just like. Is that is that almost like depression you get for the first week of the summer where you're like, right, I don't have anything to do now. Like, what the hell do I do? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm still working. But it's just that thing is I don't have anything kind of to study in the evening. So I'm just like, eh, what do I do now? So yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like my kids, you know, one in univers university and <clears throat> one in, uh, uh, yeah, 11 so yeah they have lots of uh, different things to do online mm -hmm. but it's not the same how they if they would go to school isn't it oh yeah yeah, yeah no that's it it's just uh 
the whole distance learning thing. I mean, I was a teacher for a little while, and it was uh, it's good, but I, yeah, I didn't enjoy the distance learning thing that much. I do. I actually do my Japanese classes through distance learning, and it works. It does work quite well, but it's not the same as going into the class and meeting people and things. Well, yes, uh, I I know the experience actually. I'm I'm trained teacher, Polish teacher. Ah, okay. Uh, but I've never worked in school. I just had a like a, a work experience. Mm. Uh, but it was fun. It was fun. I, I remember that in the uh, last exam uh, class, uh, I've <clears throat> like gave uh, uh, people work, work, work to do at home, and they actually done it, and I was oh. very surprised. Just oh yeah. Just a few days before exams. Oh yeah, that's uh, that was the thing when I started teaching in Sweden. I was like, "What's wrong with you kids? You actually do what I ask you." It's like <laughs> you're you're weird. You're weird kids. You guys are weird kids. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. It was the first days when the uh, science fiction was introduced into you know into school, and we've been doing uh, year eighty four. So oh, 1984, was, ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was, uh, you know, prohibited before. It was, like, uh, early early 90s. So, yeah. Ah, okay, and then everyone, because this is like, oh, this is the book that was banned before, let's read this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it was fun. Oh, yeah, oh, it's good, it's good. You know, that must be, that must have been quite fun to get all these books that you weren't allowed before, basically, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, that's pretty. It's, it must be pretty cool, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I did. I was doing this semester. I did. Uh, what did I do? And all of these are just like evening classes. I did like a, a quarter, like a quarter semester um, economics class. I did a quarter semester like Russian history class. I did a half semester Japanese. And I did a Swed I was doing Swedish along with that as well. I did like quite a lot this term and I passed everything. So I was just like, yeah, it was good. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to get past it, but at the same time you kind of miss having something to do over the summer. I mean, I could have done like some geology courses by this through like Stockholm University, but I was just like, no, <laughs> I don't really want to do that just now at least, but yeah. Well, yeah. my daughter likes uh, geology, you know, she's an um, environment scientist, so she's doing ah, a lot okay. of, of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, um, I think the, the earth science stuff is quite interesting. I just, it's just at the moment, I've got a few maths courses and stuff that I need to, uh, I've got. I did like maths courses two or three years ago, and I just never sat the exams for them. So I need to. I actually need to do those and just get those ticked off. Um, so yeah, that's the next project. What are you guys planning over the summer? Can you plan anything? No, I can't plan anything, especially mm. when. The, well, I was go, going to go to uh, Poland, but of course, uh, still, uh, it's impossible. So I don't know when it will be possible. I don't know. How often do you uh, normally? Yeah, how often do you get to one, at least once a year if it's possible? Mm -hmm. uh, but then I have you know a fantastic festival of uh, Polish craft beers. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Do you watch? Do you watch uh, Thomas Kopira? Do you watch his channel? Yes. Yes, well, yeah. that's right. Like it started really when I was in yeah. BS, I was watching him. Oh yeah, yeah, no, because he's he's got like a million. I find that hilarious. He's got like a million subscribers now, so he's got like two point five percent of the whole Polish population <laughs> watching him. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So he, yeah, no. So I mean, he's. I, I just because Poland is forty million, isn't it? It's forty million people. Yeah, Poland. something like this. Yeah, so it's like yeah, he's and he's got like one million subscribers, so that's like two and a half percent of the entire population watches him because his reviews are all in Polish. So what? Yeah. It's like Poland and a little bit of Ukraine that can understand him, and then nobody else. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Because I remember he started. He did. He's got a channel where he's got like five or six English 
reviews, but then he just never, just, I don't think he just ever stuck with it, to be honest. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I think he realized that uh, it's not very interested for uh, other people who are watching Polish beers when they can't really taste it. Mm. So what's the point? Uh, he had only like few um, foreign beers that were relevant. So what's the point, really? Yeah, I mean, the thing was, I was really impressed with the standard of the Polish beers when I was there. I mean, Adam, what Polish beers have you had? Um, I went to Poland in November, December last year. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I had quite a lot when I was there. We went for a long weekend. Um, I'm trying to think where we went. I can't remember. Seems so long ago now. Uh, we went to Poznan, mm. and it was really good. Some really good bars and stuff around there. But yeah, I just tried to get as much as I could on draft. Uh, brought some back. Um, I think I th dropped one off at Dave the Beer Dad. Uh, it, I had a barley wine whilst I was out there. Twelve percent barley wine. It was only like from the supermarket, it wasn't? But you, you'd never get that here. You'd never get twelve percent barley wine in the UK in a supermarket. Just. I think the the level that they start at is is brilliant, and then it just sort of builds from there when you go to the more craftier bars. Mm. Yeah, you can I mean, be very surprised what you can buy in Lidl's or Tesco's. It yeah, all, you know, it's just a really extensive you know range. Yeah, I think it was Carrefour. I think it was really. Yeah, I was highly surprised the selection that you can get there. It, it's on par with uh, I think some of the supermarkets in the US in terms of what they have available. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was I was really impressed with the quality of the Polish stuff as well. I mean, Brovar, the one that really sticks in my mind was Brovar Tre Compli, I think they were called. Yeah, Brovar Tre Compli, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they, it was like a white IPA that they had, and it was just, it was like, or I, it was either a white IPA or like a, Hopfenweiser or something like that, and it was it's one of the regular beers, and it's just ridiculously good. And I remember I remember being in this bar in Warsaw. There, there's a really good beer shop, um, and the guy who owns it, he's like a big metalhead. He looks like a Viking. It's quite funny. I went into this, and uh, I, I I literally spent like forty euros in the place because I was like, oh, it's Polish beer. Let's just you know buy everything that's interesting and I was just like I picked out like 20 beers and I thought you know this oh you know this will be like 80 euros or something and I thought right there and I paid, I paid for it and it was like 40 and I was just I was like what I was like, Pavel, man, how the fuck is your shop so cheap? And then these Poli like there was these Polish guys in there just just cutting the regular customers, just like, laughing at me. Like it's like, how can twenty beers? How can like twenty of these beers? And you're talking like imperial stouts and uh, barley wines and stuff. How can this only be like forty euros? It was just it was ridiculous. It was it was nuts. Um, yeah, I, so yeah people, I, had the, I had the same situation when I gone the, to Lidl's. And I was like, oh, I like everything. So <laughs> I had a whole trolley. I had whole trolley, but I had no money, right? Um, I had only like uh, 100 zloty. So it's like 20 pounds, something like this. And actually, I bought almost everything. I think I left like <laughs> two pounds or something. Uh, like, okay, why not? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that one that I bought was like the ones that I got was like 160. I'm sure it was like 160 lotties or something like that. 40 euros. <laughs> so it's like Jesus. Yeah, I'm trying to look back through my own taps because as I well forgotten what, what beers were bought there. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Raduka was one that was really good. Um, some of their sort of milk stouts, and I had a red from them as well. That was really a good. Yeah, I mean, there's, I know, I know, Ale Brovar, Trey Compley, um, Stu Mastov. Oh, Brood yeah, Stu Mastov is, is very good. And actually, you can you can buy it even when you're flying out of the uh, Wrocław uh, airport. It's it's in the shops there. Uh, so you can, mm. you can buy, you know, like last, last minute, uh, excellent beers. Mm. So it's not yeah. a nice thing. 
Yeah, no, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I need to get, I was thinking, I quite fancy, once the borders and shit open up again, I do fancy just going to, I've got a good friend in Warsaw and another one in Gdansk, so I do quite fancy going across and seeing, the, you know, going and visiting them and indulging in some Polish beers again. I, need to, I want to explore Poland a little bit, because I've only really seen Warsaw. Yeah, you know, and, uh, actually, actually, the... Uh, Gdansk will be quite uh, interesting for you. Uh, you can try a few uh, uh, open beers. They are quite heavy. You, as in the Dutch brewery, open? No, actually, it's a uh, uh, Danzig, Danzig um, invention. It was uh, like exported to all the. Uh, oh, it's a style. Oh, it's a, it's a style of beer. You mean? Yes. Ah, okay. Because I remember, I've tried, I remember the, Grod, I can't remember if it's the, po, is it the Grodzicki? Grodzicki, that yeah. Wheaty, yeah, that wheaty, smoky, oh, slightly yeah. salty type beer. That's the Grodzicki. So this is something different. What's it like? Oh, Grodzicki, Grodzicki is uh, like a very weak, wheat smoked beer. And mm. usually it's like uh, three, four percent max, usually about three percent. Okay, so what what was the well what was the one that you mentioned then? What is that like? The one Yopen. from oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's like uh, about forty plateau. You know, it's, it's very heavy. It's like an mm. essence of beer. Okay, that you know, that could be interesting. Yeah, I need to I'll need to message you then before I go to Poland and see if I can get some of these because I love trying traditional styles and things and it was quite it was crazy like when i had those polish reviews people just went nuts like i got so many comments from poland who they just yeah. thought it was brilliant that someone from abroad was like reviewing their beer it's like yeah yeah it. i i think it's just just the thing you know if you see the polish thing oh yes yes i have to comment it's polish you know it's very good mm. <laughs> No, it's the thing in Poland that was funny was you always got like they would hear you speak in English and they're like, Oh yeah, you're not you're you're not English. I was like, No, Scottish. And they'd be like, Oh, I know like my friend works in Aberdeen or something. They'd always like know someone who works in yeah. Scotland. It's great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they you'd always meet I think the Irish people say the same, like they are the whenever they go to Poland, they're like, Oh my you know, my cousin works in like Cork or Dublin or something. It's always a thing, yeah. It's good, but no, I had I had great fun in Poland. Um there was I was in the I went to uh, there's a bar in Lund called Inferno and there was Polish guys in there. And I was just sitting chatting away to the just chatting away to these guys as well. Po I always, I think Polish people are always great fun when they go abroad and they always join in very well, I think. It's good. But yeah, it's always it's good fun to go to Poland. Maybe that's what we should do is beer tubers do Poland. That should be like a group trip. <laughs> oh yeah, this would be great. Well that it, would be well, it was fairly easy to fly from Liverpool to Poland. It was quite cheap as well. But whether who knows well, what the air airport system is going to be like when we oh, well, now well. it's quite quite difficult uh, i used to have like two separate lines uh to poland to krakow actually and now there's nothing uh, last year i was flying to uh, wrocław uh, it's not very convenient for me but it, it, it was closest uh but now even uh, even Ryanair is not going to poland so I don't know what, what it would be. Mm. I mean, it's maybe you look at going to. There's still quite a few things to Poland out of Edinburgh, Christoph. So maybe you can go up there. Yeah, but it's still like two and a half hours to drive to Edinburgh. <laughs> and you can get the. Yeah, but you can get the train for like twenty yeah. pounds return yeah. or something. The train, the train from Newcastle to Edinburgh is like stupidly cheap. So maybe, maybe it's an option. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, it was uh, the same. I would say, if you look at Liverpool Airport, it was blue, it's a blue sky air or blue air, something like that. That they were flying out of Liverpool, number of Polish uh, airports they were flying to. I mean, we've got a little airport next to Malmo, Sturup, and they like we get whizzier. Let me see about Malmo, Malmo Airport, because it's quite funny. It costs you more 
it costs you more for the bus to get down there than it does to actually fly. <laughs> yeah, either, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. I paid like I'm not kidding. I paid like 25, 250 kroners for the bus, like a return ticket for the bus to the the airport. So that's like twenty pounds roughly. And then the actual flight ticket to Poland to return was like a hundred and twenty crowns. <laughs> so it was like it was it was twice as expensive to get the bus to the airport than it was to actually fly to Poland. <laughs> It was nuts. Malmut, let's see Malmut Airport. See what destinations they've got. Wikipedia. Wizier, Wizier, Wizier. Um Warsaw, Gdansk, Katowice. Yeah, that's it. And with Ryanair, you can go to Krakow. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, I can choose. I can choose which one to go to. Maybe I'll go to Krakow and then go to Warsaw after that next time. So yeah, I think it would be a great idea uh, because you can see a lot of you know like uh, old stuff, uh, old architecture in the, in Krakow, and then go to Warsaw. You know what? Sometimes uh, uh, if you can go through the you know old, very old town and uh, academic sectors. sectors you can see that it almost looks like Durham. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's very old town, so yeah. Mm. yeah and I think actually, Krakow uh, was uh, like uh, um, first Polish university, you know, 14th mm. century. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, Poland was quite a power... I remember Poland was quite a powerful country at one point. You had the Poland-Lithuania Union... And like was yeah. that like sixteen hundreds, and then Poland's just like disappeared for like two hundred years, and it was there. Yeah, because because we've been uh, we had uh, wars all the time with everyone. Uh, that's why uh, you mm. can't sustain <laughs> such a rate of wars. Uh, but yeah, Poland was biggest country in in the uh, in the world because we've been like from Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. Hmm. So, yeah, a lot of yeah, because yeah. I found it quite. Uh, I found that one of the things that I found that was there, uh, <coughs> it was in a Scottish newspaper recently, and it was really funny because it was like um, they were saying that there's a they were talking about the influence that Scotland as an independent country had had on Europe before the um before the Union, and it was like, if you go to uh, Gdansk, and obviously at the time it was a German city, it was Danzig, and it was saying that in this, in the Polish city, there was like um, Germans and Poles complaining about Scottish people stealing their jobs and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just yeah. like, that was, it was so funny, it was like, yeah. Um, so, you yeah, know, there apparently there's a, bit of, there's a bit of history between the Scots and that area of Germany, Poland, because I think yeah, because that was where Germany, like the northern part of Poland, is where Germany was born. It was Prussia, wasn't it? Preussen. Uh, yes, actually, yes, it was a Polish mistake to give them some land there mm. <laughs> uh, for Teuton's uh, knights, and they developed in a, in a you know a secular country. Hmm. Yeah, because I remember like Poland, like the, the western part of Ukraine, like Lviv, was Lvov. So their dialect, I think, is very similar to Polish, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, still, it's uh, like a uh, huge uh, Polish minority here. Mm. Um, but yeah, you can you can still say in Poland that uh, Lvov is Polish, uh, mm. despite anything what the Ukrainian would, would say. Uh, but yeah, it is a long, long uh, history, so uh, sometimes it's very bloody. Oh, yeah. no, it's, inter it's interesting to talk about these things anyway, it's always cool <laughs> to, to learn a little bit about that. But yeah, no, I always. I always had a great time in Poland. I think that's one of the things you do, you need to see about getting yourself a. Uh, some more Polish. It'd be cool. That would be a good angle for you, I think, on your channel, Christoph, would be to like talk about the Polish beers in English and. Show people about Polish beers. Oh, yeah, well, if I have an uh, opportunity to have a Polish beer, that's the problem, uh, mm. because it is a very weird system in, in Poland. 
that you can't send beers, uh, you know, uh, over the mail. No. You oh, have okay. to buy it in brewery or in shop, but you can't send it. Oh, and even so, like, mail order companies don't exist, basically. Uh, no, they are not allowed to sell alcohol over the internet. Oh. Um, this. Hang on, bear with me one sec. I'm sure there's a. I've been looking at a Polish uh, online shop recently. I was going to do an order. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been, I, I've been. There's a Polish. Uh, there's actually a Polish shop in Copenhagen. That's um, there's a Polish shop in Copenhagen that uh, does all the Polish craft beers. I've never been to it, so the next time I go yeah, across, I'm going to, I'm going to go across. It's a different, the, different yeah. system because if they will buy uh, those beers in Poland, well, there's no problem. Mm. You can just send them over, over, you know, you can't buy uh, on the internet. You can order them over internet, but you have to pick it up in, in the brewery. This, this one isn't. It's uh, uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim.pl. I'll put the link in. But they post out, it's, I think it's like 8 to 10 euro delivery to the UK. Well, it doesn't sound Polish, so maybe German. It's got a Polish address. So uh, maybe maybe it's based in Germany, so they they, they allowed to do it. Who knows? Okay. That's how they get round. <clears throat> that's how they get round in uh, Denmark as well. I just realised my video has gone really crappy again on the. Stream. I've got Harry with us now as well. There we go. I do. You all right. Yeah, good. Just as you said, I've just dropped my uh, camera quality down to three sixty. Yeah. Mm. That helps. How yeah. we doing all? It's nice to see you again, Christoph. Oh, hello. Yeah. I tell you what, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a refill and then I'm gonna shift through to my room and use the five G router instead and see if that changes things. So I'll. Jump out a sec and then, uh, yeah, okay. How we doing? You can't say how do. It's been uh, what you pull and block name that. How we doing? Oh, okay, he says how do. He does. I mean, you said how do when you first came on. Um, yeah, we're all right. You okay? Yeah, not too bad. Nice long day. Nice, nice long day. Are you brewing uh, IPAs at the moment, or? Uh, to, or tomorrow I'm brewing gold. We were really worried with uh, having a wild yeast infection, and it's just been kind of took me took it out, uh, out of me in the past couple of days. Just been acid washing the fuck out of everything. What, was there a, was there an, a uh, was there an infection, or was it? I th I don't think there is because it's been down. To, like I tried another beer. Uh, which I racked off yesterday. I tried it this morning. I was like, I can't taste it in that. And it's only, it's a weird, it's a weird one because it's like a, it's this new uh, yeast that we've had for about uh, two months now. Um, and I brewed two or three beers on it. Uh, well, I brewed well, nine beers on it in total, maybe, yeah, about nine beers on it in total. Two or three first beers were fine. Next two, we didn't know, just because they just went straight out. Um, and then uh, two of them have just been a little bit iffy in terms of like having a slight off flavour in them. Um, and then and, and like we didn't have any returns, but I just, we all noticed it. And we were all kind of like, uh, something might happen. <laughs> so we might, you know, might get some returns. And then the, the next couple have been fine. Like, so... Uh, I don't know. It's it seems to be one that a kind of half flavour that's appearing in one beer more than others, and I don't know why. Um, but uh, we we sent some samples off to get them analysed, and they're going to tell us exactly what the problem is. They won't but, tell you the location of it, where it is if it is in fact there, will they? Um, well, we're sending it off to Brew Lab, and Brew Lab will tell us what the infection is. They'll be able to locate exactly what the problem is. Uh, they won't tell us where the problem came from, but they'll say what the problem is, and then we can just kind of like work out from there. So, if it's a Britannomyces, then we're like, oh, we're fucked. So we just kind of like, you know, 
get a new beast and restart everything and just kill everything with fire. That doesn't even work. Killing stuff with fire, you have to kill it with knife back. Um, so today, well, the past couple of days have just been like killing the whole kit with acid. Um, so today we're putting uh, nitric acid and phosphoric acid um, in a uh, in in the in the fermenters, and it was eating through the floor. That's how good the stuff is. So it was just properly mm -hmm. properly eating through everything. Um, because my worry was that we had beer stone in certain containers, and uh, as soon as I oh, came okay. into the brewery back in back in well July last year, I was like, I saw the containers. I was like, there's beer stone in there. I'm like, yeah, we don't worry about it. I was like, oh, okay, I'd worry about that. And then and then uh, that was my initial thought. It might be something to do with that. And uh, so then I said, we'll just buy loads of knife pack and then just put uh, acid through the whole system and. Uh, yeah, it's eaten away pretty much all of it in one of the fermenters after about a four-hour wash. So I'm going to redo it. I'm going to brew into that fermenter tomorrow, and then I'm going to redo it on the rest of the tanks over the next couple of days. But it's just like a solid day of cleaning, um, and it takes it out of you. Even can though you do it, doing all the work, but yeah. Can you do a test brew on it just to see whether it, those off flavours are still there, or do you have to do a full brew? The smallest test brew I can do is 15 barrel, which is 2,500 litres. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah that's so that's, there's, there's my problem. <laughs> yeah. But uh, oh, we'll, we'll find it eventually. It's just been a pretty shattering the past couple of days. Well, it's better to clean it everything uh, thoroughly than, than have a problem later. Exactly, exactly. I think what, what what we did find was we had a bit of an issue with one of the chemicals we were using. Uh, I noticed the difference we moved between different providers, and I was like, I have to add so much more uh, caustic into the tank to actually clean it as, as, as efficiently as I did before. So I think we're having a problem with one of the chemicals. So we've moved on to another provider, and I reckon after this, using this new provider's chemical, I was like, I was quite shocked in terms of how good they were today. You, you pay the money for it, you just get a high concentrate of, of liquid. Um, but it, it was working so much better today, so we'll see, see over the next couple of weeks what happens. But yeah, another 30 barrel brew tomorrow, so 5,000 litres tomorrow again. Of just um, gold. Of gold. Uh, I brewed Flint Napper on Tuesday, which enables us to do Deer Stalker. Um, because we'll mix it with Farmer's Best, which I'll brew next week. Because um, all the Farmer's Best I brewed this uh, last week went off a of bottling. Um, so I'll brew Farmer's again. We'll blend that with Flint Napper. Then we'll get Deer Stalker. So we'll then get three beers in total. But, uh, I've still never tried anything well. that you've brewed, Harry. Still never had anything. It's all shit. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> I'll, 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 uh, as soon as you come down you'll get to try some the milk stout's really good the bitter's really good mm. milk stout sold out mm. farmers was it um, which one was it you had the flint napper I think so yeah I can't remember I quite like flint napper because it, it's, it's it's more of like what an am, amber rail more than a, than a bitter um which is still a bitter in my eyes. But um yeah. it's marketed as, so it's different. Um mm. Yeah, it's 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 not. Mm. Uh, so the Flint Napper is the Amber Rail, which is four point two, and then Farmer's Best is our session bitter at three point six. Um, and the five oh six as well, that's a really nice pale. Yeah, five, I quite like 506. That's a bit of a pain to brew because it's a different type of malt that I use. So most of our malt, we all we grow on our farm um, and we get it sent back in bulk. So it gets sent back in a, in a 20 ton lorry, then just put through the, the milling machine and, and I can just collect it all in bulk. But when I'm doing 506, everything's in 25 kilo bags. And when you're doing like a, a, a big brew, so a 30 barrel brew of it, it's like, 
I don't know, it's like 20, 25 kilo bags or more than that. And it's just such a pain. It's like moving them all, each one into, into the, uh, into the hopper. So I just prefer when I get it on both, I just get this big, uh, hopper, put it on the, on top of the, uh, auger and then just open the, the flap on the bottom, add any extras or any DWB or anything else like that. And then just go. But when it's 25 years, it's just like, ugh, ugh, each one, it's just a pain. <laughs> The life of a brewer. Oh, the life of a brewer. Lifting stuff and getting covered in caustic. That's the life of a brewer. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all good. So let's let well let's look at this then. Best beer that you guys have had this week. Christoph, what's your best beer this week? <clears throat> well, we're on brewery. Uh Jody uh Beardy. Jordy Beer Geek. Okay, I. What kind of style? Tell us about it. Uh, it's an oatmeal stout. Uh, it's a collaboration with uh, Mikula. It's a uh, you know the, Jordi, um like, well, the own interpretation of uh, Mikula's uh, Beer Geek. Oh it, right, okay. It is a little bit, I think, lower in IBV, but uh, I couldn't uh, like taste the uh, original, so I, I don't know. But it's very, very roasty, coffee-driven. Beer, nice, nice, but it's very roasty and very coffee. And I think it's the main, main thing what you can smell and taste in beer. You have nice, you know, uh, sour uh, notes like you know, uh, dark chocolate, but it also can be uh, like uh, you know, quite acidity um, coffee. My wife likes. Mm. You know, uh, quite sour coffee. So yeah, she liked it. Mm. Have you got your wife into beer now quite a bit as well? Well, she's trying everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't drink everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's yeah. trying, and um, like teaching youngsters as well. They are, they are in age, so they can try. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but uh, like. Uh, my daughter would rather prefer sweet, juicy beers, or even uh, sweet ciders than uh, you know everything. You know, but it's a little bit, little bit bitter. It, it, she's making face. And bleh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my son is a little bit more, you know, into uh, hoppy beers, but still, still, uh, you know, uh, he would prefer you know nice. Pilsner than anything else. Yeah, I mean the I've been I have to admit I have been getting more into my lagers again recently. I mean I discovered there's a brewery very close to me over here called uh, Hulia Brewery, and um, I found these guys some of the best. They've got some of the best lagers I've tried outside of of Germany and or Czech. You know they've got some really yeah. really great stuff. Um, so yeah, and no, I, and actually, you know, the, the, to brew a good lager, it's a quite a, a art because mm. you can't hide anything in 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 this style, so it has to be perfect. Yeah, no, to get a good yeah to get a good pills or whatever, exactly. No, I'd agree with you. It's a, I mean, Harry's the one to ask about that to get the pills. Is, a good pill uh, is just, quite difficult. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I brew a lager, but it's it's a bit of a lager high lager ale hybrid because I brew it with ale yeast. And when I say I brew it with ale yeast, Stone's bitter yeast. Um, that's that that's hard brewing a lager with that. Um, and it's it's just because we're we're so worried about cross contamination in the git. Um, that look what happens. Then I'll start acid washing everything. Um, but uh, yeah, no. When I've brewed, I've brewed a Pilsner before, and it's there's so little um, room for error in terms of because it's so clean and so crisp. It's so hard to if if you have any form of um, off flavour from either the mash or or your boil or anything like that. Um, if you've got any possible diacetyl, you can instantly notice it. Um, and well, if you have diacetyl, you can say that it is a Czech lager. It's, it's intended, yes. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, but like my my favourites are like Dortmunders. I love Dortmunders, or um, or just a standard Hells. 
just nice and crisp and clean or a little bit of sweetness in there so you can probably hide it and say it's a bit diet seeds or it's a bit of sweetness but like yeah it's it's really tricky really 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 tough to i i think with our lager i use sars and magnum um and and that's just some i'm fairly happy with it, with that combo but uh and loads of it as well not very much bittering though i don't mm. compared to my other beers not very much bittering no I mean, I have to admit, like, I, I don't really, outside of doing, like, the live streams and the beer reviews and stuff, I very rarely, you know, drink, drink, to be honest with you. Um, but, I mean, a, Pils a good old Pilsner Rurkel, it's very difficult mm. to beat that. It really yeah, is. It, I mean, it is with anything. Yeah, I mean, like, Pils Pilsner Rurkel or a Leffe Blonde, if you want something, you know, that's a little bit more ailish, heavy. I mean... And we're if we're talking about supermarket beers for me, it's always a Leffe Blonde and a bit of Pilsner Urquell. That's very; those two are very hard to beat for me. I think. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I can't stand Pilsner Urquell. It's just but for me, it's uh, Paulana. I love it because mm. it's just so cheap uh, and, and nice. Is it like it's uh, for for a twelve pack? It's like twenty one pounds. Yeah, so I, yeah, I'd rather have that. Yeah. Or even Oktoberfest, when they had the Oktoberfest, it was um, forty pounds for a case of twenty. So again, can't complain. I mean, if I think if I was living in Germany again, probably it would either be the Rothaus or the the uh, what you call it, the Augustiner. That yeah, would be yeah, one, yeah. I would think. Yeah. Augustiner Hellers, which is like three pound forty. I'm 50 about yeah, the Germans are paying like 80 cents for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Mm. Mm. I see, um, who was it earlier today? Honest Brew. I, it wasn't even uh, Books and Beers. It, it, uh, Books and Bottles. It was something random in the UK was trying to push a new lager. I think it could have been like, oh, was it? It was. I, I've been through a different sites, a couple of different sites today, because uh, my mate was trying to buy some beer for me. I was. I think Beer Wolf has got like a new German lager, which they're trying to push on the UK market a little bit. Um, no, sorry, oh, Little Le Little Leeds. It was Little Leeds. Okay. Um, and I never heard of it before. This lager they were trying to push. Um, but if you go on their new in, if that exists. I don't really use that, yeah. their website, but yeah, it's just some random logo which I've never heard of. Yeah, I've got it. Have you been doing? Have you been doing more orders and stuff since the COVID thing, Christoph? Because these these two down here are like beasts in the whole online order. It's when you go in the chat and stuff, they're like beasts in the online orders and things like. This. No, no, <laughs> no. Actually, I had no time to drink. Mm. So what's the point? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. uh, just standing in the uh, in the cupboard. So what's the point? If I had uh, an opportunity to go to to, to Morrison's or Tesco, I was just grabbing something. Mm. Uh, recently, I was just buying beers in Lidl's, just just to have a nice drink, you know. Yeah. Just, mm. Because really, uh, well, uh, I had like a stash, right? So I was just using them to have uh, like a daily reviews. Mm. But they were like uh, recorded a month earlier. Oh, so, yeah. Like, no time. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's, I mean, I'm going through the thing. I've got, a, because I had the Finnish beer box come through, I had the ones from Slovenia. Um, then they're releasing, you know, the, the temporary things. It's the Istanbul I get. There's the, the monthly release that we get as well. I've got such a backlog just now. I'm doing like two videos a day. A day. Just I'm just trying to empty my fridge and get on top of what I've got. So it's like it feel at the moment it feels like a bit of a chore, but it is all good beer, and I'm still in, I am still enjoying it. But uh, I'm just at the moment I'm just like you know I actually feel like I need a rest. <laughs> I just found that beer, James. It's called Einsiedler. Einsiedler. Mm. And it's a hell. £3.60. It's mm. more than what I want to pay for a hell. Hell is whatever. 
classic Bavarian hell, as it says, and that's all you get to find out about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I find it, find Seidler. Find Seidler. Uh, Private Brewery outside Brow House. It gets a 3.27 overall, and uh, tapped. I think it's just like. We couldn't get Augustina, so we got this. <laughs> so buy this instead. Ah, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few comments as well. Neglected the comments for a wee while. So it's uh, uh, yeah, you were saying that was about the books and mm. the barn thing. Oh, Eclipse Brewing's been watching us. Nice to see you guys live. Yeah, that's awesome. School. Uh, Craig said Eclipse Brew has been a while. And ah, cool is saying, did they say anything about the beers from New Shipping? Um, I just I got the pills and I got the Equinol IPA from them. I don't know anything about this brewery. The reason I bought them was just um, it's another new brewery I hadn't heard of, and that's what I do with the local list. When there's a local list comes out, just try something from a, a new brewery that I've not tried before. So yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> Uh, and Craig is saying beer merchants have a good deal. Augustine the is £34.56 for 12 bottles. Mm. Still quite pricey when you compare yes. it to the German yeah. thing. I mean, I have to admit, if it was for me with that, I would go for Pilsner or Urkel. You can get them for fairly cheap in the supermarkets. Or just Paulana. Paulana. Get Harry, Harry Special and get 100 uh, bottles for 80 quid. The Harry Special. Oh dear, dear. <laughs> mm. Yeah, crack this open by the by the way though. The vape trail, mm. the keys and Zagavor. So, what uh, kind of beer was it? It's a session barley wine. Oh, the barley wine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, it's I, when I first tasted it, I was like, tastes weird, tastes almost like spiced, and it's because it's got um tonka beans. Cinnamon and cardamom in it, mm. and I was like, I can't taste taste cardamom, but I can definitely taste cinnamon. Or a massive honey note as well, um, but that is not saying that it is. You'd never know it's a sessionable eleven point six percent. But uh, yeah, nice to try something from Zagabal finally as well. Oh yeah, though they're a very nice brewery actually. When's the review going to publish? I'll be quite keen. To, I'm not. I won't be able to get that beer. So I need I, to watch. I have. I haven't bothered reviewing it. I just kind of just drank it. All oh, right. Okay. It's just sometimes I just fancy like doing that. But um, I think it's an Antonov as well in the background. I think that's like an An two two two. Is it? The big, oh, the beer. The, the, yeah, the big one. I think that's what it oh, is. Oh no, no, no. The is... beer, the, the beer's a Tupolev. Oh, um, a Tupolev I, know the, yeah. I know the one that you mean. The 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 yeah the Ant the the Antonov was the big massive thing, wasn't it? Is it? I don't know if it's Antonov two. Yeah, Antonov two two two. I think uh, two two five. That's what it is. Yeah, two two five. Mm. Yeah, because that's like the biggest plane that ever flew, or something, is it not? Yeah, and I think that's what it is in the background of the cab. Hmm. Um, oh. It just looks like it from the underside of it, but uh... I remember. I remember. I love. I love the shit like that. I love going to the old military museums and seeing the old planes and things. It's mm. great. I mean, yeah. uh, it was when we went to East. My dad took me to one of the Luftwaffe museums in East Germany. They had the Messerschmitts and the one nineties, and they had a whole load of like Eastern German, East German Air Force stuff that they'd scrubbed all the numbers off and things like before the, when the communists fake MiG off, fighters was, and stuff like that. Yeah, but it was amazing though. If you saw them next, to, you you saw the Mig fifteen next to the the F eighty four Saber. It was like they just copied the thing yeah. completely. Yeah, but that's that's my dream. You can do it in. You, I don't know if you can still do it in Ukraine, but you can get a um, a Mig fighter jet to take you to the edge of space and back for like ten thousand euros. I don't know, <laughs> I'd be well up for doing that. Mm. Just pretend I'm in like a communist. Russia or North Korea again, like war that doesn't exist. Well, I remember. Is it not that because I remember the two fastest planes that have ever flown? It's the SR Blackbird, and it's a state secret as to how high and how fast that thing went. And then the Russians had the the Mig, 
is it the 25 or the 22? They had the Fox Bat, and the thing had engines that were, the, the engines on this thing were about six feet, you know, six feet diameter. It's crazy. Just going to get a refill. We'll be back in a sec. Mm -hmm. and I just remember my brother talking to me about it quite a lot, but then mm -hmm. kind of doing the sales pitch for it, and I'm like, well, you know, I can't, I can't afford it, so you can buy it for me, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, Ukraine's on the list. I, I want to go and s I'd love to go and see like Kiev and Lviv and Odessa and things like that. And oh, yeah. well, the, Cry the Crimea is difficult to go to now for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be doing. I'm doing Georgia next year, which should be quite interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, um Is that through your brother's company? Yeah, because we we were going to be doing Belarus, and then Tash was like, "Oh, I don't want to do Belarus because whatever." Thoughts that she has on Belarus, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll just select another random country and let's get Georgia instead. And um, and yeah, she was like, well, Georgia sounds more interesting, and we're gonna do a, I think we're gonna do like a wine tour around Georgia. Um, not that... find massively into wine at all, but I just thought it'd be interesting to try, and that's through CJ's company. Yeah. Well, you can you can try uh, Georgian cognac. This is great. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I, I do like cognac. Be honest, uh, yeah, that could be cool actually. I'd love to go down to the Caucasus and see what it's like. Yeah, he, well, he does. Um, one of the places I want to go to, he does Abkhazia as well. So, an Abkhazia, which is like an officially unrecognized country, but yeah, does Abkhazia. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's one of, the, one of the countries he does as well. So, yeah, I'm interesting going there. He told me about the first time he went, went there was. You basically got told, go to this point, walk this far, meet me here. And then they picked him up there and then flew him over, over the border, which the, the non-existent border, and then took him there. And then that's when he did his kind of first scouting trip and exploring and meeting new customers, uh, meeting new people and stuff. And then after that, I think it took about a year before he actually made it as an official destination for him to take people there. So that's, that's yeah, that's another place we'll definitely look at going. Yeah, that's the problem. There's nothing official there, so yeah. it's just you know, grey area and uh, lots of money floating. Oh yeah, that's what you like. It's my sort of travelling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be cool. It would definitely. I'd love to go and see the like Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia yeah. and and things like that. I don't know if you could see how easy it is to fly down there from Copenhagen, but. I think I think in your case you could probably organise like a special. It'll probably find you like a special route, a special cheapest route possible. I think from memory, a lot of them. He seems to go through Berlin a lot of the time because I think Germany seems to have more embassies. Oh, just on a, just on a thought, when and when are you going and how long are you going for? I think we're looking at going for about ten days, uh, and it'll be next May. That's loosely. When I was looking mm, at it. I could be uh, that I could be potentially keen for that. How much is it costing you? I think we well we haven't budgeted it for it yet, but we're looking about a thousand pound per person, Mark. Is that all inclusive or obviously so you've got spending it money? It will be it will be breakfast and lunch probably. So kind of half board really. That's all right. That's actually yeah. pretty decent. Yeah, that could be doable. Because you yeah. and I need to talk about North Korea again and start. Yeah, well, Tasha, Tasha officially said she does not want to come to North Korea, so it'll, be, it'll just be you and me. So. That's fine. That's fine. You yeah. and I can do some beer tubing. Yeah, beer tubing in, beer tubing in North Korea. Mm. Fun. Can't get those beers anywhere else. Yeah, no, I'm well, def I'm definitely keen yeah, for that. Definitely yeah. keen for that. Some uh, North Korean beer tubing. That, that, I think that would be awesome if... Uh, that your brother drew up that tour for me, and it was, yeah. it was a bit annoying because my cousin couldn't get the visa because he was in Australia. But um, yeah, no, that that would be. I definitely really, I really want to go and see the whole see North Korea. But I think I would need to budget as well going to China. Yeah, I have to budget going to China. Yeah, yeah. I'd, what I'd, I'm what I'd probably do at that time is because it will be around about August that we'd go. That's the best time to go if if. And do I'd, I'd rather do it on a group tour as well because on a group tour you get to see more 
than going on your own tour. It's a little bit harder. That, that's the gist I got from, from CJ anyway, was if you're on a group tour, it's easier. You may not see all the things you want, but you'll get to see more things and, and things will just jump up at you and you'll, you'll get to see them it, rather than if you went on your own. Because I think he said, like, when, when I was there, he said that a couple of people went a couple of weeks before on their own and then of all the like the, the 19 or 20 different things that they were supposed to be doing like only four of them actually happened mm-hmm. and so it would just be far more fun if we went on the group because there's more kind of pressure on 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 the tour guys to actually take us to these different places so yeah no I'd, I'd definitely be interested in going yeah i mean the only thing that i quite fancied that i think there was one of the national parks in the east like the mountains because my cousin and i quite like hiking so i mean It'd be quite we cool to Kongansan. join the... Yeah, yeah Mankong, I think... Mankongansan, which is on on the South Korean border, but you go in on the east side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we did that. So I think we did, like, where... I remember we, we went we went Pyongyang and then went quite far south. Uh, no, went a little bit north to Pyongsong and then went far south, went to the DMZ, then went all the way up to the north and then went down on the east coast all the way down to Kongansan and then from Kongansan went across uh, west back to Pyongyang again. Mm-hmm. But that was, what, 19 days, I think it was there for? Are you, would you not, were you not worried that you wouldn't be able to get out if you got arrested? Why would you get arrested? For some, an arbitrary reason. No. I think it's all, it's all Western propaganda that we get fed over here. It's all shit. <laughs> it's all shit that we get fed over, fed over here about North Korea. Honestly, is. What about all the what was it the journalists that it took Bill Clinton to get them out in uh, in America? Bill Clinton is a reasonably shady character. Let's let's be honest. <laughs> I'm not saying he's not. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's. We, we we had good company. I, I was going round with the vice speaker of the Russian Parliament at the time, Vladimir Zirinovsky, an interesting man. <laughs> to uh, tell lovely Putin stories. Uh, he's he's the, um he's like um uh he's like the shadow. Uh, what do you call it? He's, he's basically like the opposite. He's 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 basically standing oh, against. He's yeah, he's, he's standing against him, but he'll never win because of course he'll never win. But no, he's, he's not uh, allowed. He's an interesting character. If you if you follow him um, from what he says on Russian TV and stuff, it's completely different to the person who you actually meet. Uh, he's, um, that he's not allowed oh, no, to say what he wants he, to say. Well, he no, is. But he's just, he's, yeah, it's just yeah, it's just in. It's just completely different uh, politically, politically to how he is in person. It's mm. all a show. It's all a show when he's in Russia. He was just a piss out when he was in, in uh, North Korea. <laughs> yeah, he, he loved some Johnny Walker. That's that's what it was. No, yeah. I would. I have to admit, I would like to go and see. Uh, do the not? Yeah, we need to look at that doing the North Korea thing in the next year or two. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. As soon as my house is gone and I buy this place, then I'll have money. Mm-hmm. One day. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at making some investments in Asia, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. And once those investments go through, then I can start putting the money for uh, for North Korea. So yeah. yeah. That's really what Davo Davo's saying about this, and I kind of agree. Oh yeah, yeah. We need to put Davo's comment up. Um, Oh, shit, I put it down again, yeah. See, I don't find it harsh on busyness at all, but I don't really know what Wormwood is. Um, but it's definitely like cinnamon, toffee, caramel, but it is thin, definitely thin. Um, and also the, the colour of the beer for a barley wine. It's like murky brown. It's a Newcastle brown that you don't want. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's just really, really murky and brown. It doesn't doesn't look very appealing, but uh, it it'll do. Have you never had absinthe? Because that's where wood. I I've, I've had absinthe once. Ended up with my brother being in casualty. 
Yeah, generally sense of regret and bad memories. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Right. I'm getting... I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it was full on absence that I had because absence is typically like eighty percent, isn't it? And yeah. I think, but, I think the stuff we had was like the fake. Absence, yeah. It's well, yeah. Main, it's toned out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we got this one as well. The proper ale is great. We don't get many bitters here in Sweden. Um, yeah, I suppose the the bitters here you get the Urebro bitter, and I forget Urebro bitter from Nerka Kultebreggeri, and I forget what the one from Neunishams called as well. As well, yeah, there's English bitters, English bitters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't get many Scotch ales and stuff in. See, uh, I'd love to get more Scotch ales. I think I ordered one the other day. Um, because my one of my pals is coming up in a couple of weeks, also known as Barry Kane. Um, mm-hmm. and he basically said to me, "Just order this, 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 this." Um, I, I basically said, "Order from these, these two different sites. Tell me what you want, and I'll just order it." Um, and I think we've got, I think we've got something from is it Tempest. I think we got something from Tempest. Oh, if it's Tempest, it'll be the old parochial. Um, it might not be their barley wine. It's something... I think we definitely got an Imperial Stout from them. Mm. Um, let me find it. I'm getting total Christmas vibes, because I generally only drink this beer at Christmas. Uh, millionaire. Classic there. Even better on it, cask. Yeah. The, pl- the place where we go um, for Christmas meal for with work, they they have quite a few uh, craft ales on, but they're only a few stouts, and it's always cold and wet, and I always want a stout, and so I generally drink quite a few millionaires. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've got uh, the one that I was thinking of from Nunes Hamdongberger. That's the oldest brewery in Sweden, by the way, guys. Um, Bideru Bitter. It's like they name all their beers after local things. And we've got, oh, Steve, I think, must be watching. Steve, if you want to join, like, um, drop me a me- drop me a message. Um, Scott- oh, yes, yeah, Scott, isn't it? Ugh. Sorry. Bra- brains does the work. Ugh. Sorry. But, yeah, if you want to join us, let us know. But, yeah, worm- uh, Wormwood is Melurt in Swedish. Common Spice and Schnapps. Oh, yeah, Swedish Schnapps, yeah. That stuff is lethal. That's, uh, yeah, Aquavit. <laughs> No, nah, stay away from that. My aunt, my aunt that's out in Australia, she's like a, one of her parents is half Danish, half German, and they always drink Aquavit at Christmas, and it's absolutely brutal that stuff. It's just mental. I could stay away from the Aquavit guys. No. <laughs> well, the name is quite nice. Is it from uh, Aquavita? Oh, I can't remember what it's. It's. I don't know how different it is from German schnapps. I really don't know. Sorry, Jim. It was. It was. No, not, I'm just. I'm just talking about you know the uh, name itself. I think yeah, white. I think it'd be the aquavit, like white water, aquavit. Yeah. yeah. Generally, it's like from Latin, you know, the uh, water of life. Aquavit. Hmm, aquavit. Yeah. Um, if I stick it into the thing, yeah, it says it's from the 15th century. It's distilled from grain and potatoes and a variety of herbs. It's also popular in Germany. So, yeah, German schnapps, yeah. It was uh, windswept brewing. Not, uh, oh, is it the wolf that you've got? The wolf of the one of the wolf Glenmarie. beers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are quite nice, actually. I've not had anything from Windswept in a good few years. I need to try and get some more of their yeah. stuff. It's a nice 9.2% session Scotch Ale. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, the two, I need to get some more of their stuff, actually, to review. I reviewed their beers years ago, and I really liked them. Actually, the original Wolf is a very nice beer. Hmm. But, yeah, I like those ones. Nice. Yeah. No, it's all good. Uh, uh, Vanessa's back. Vanessa's back watching us again. <laughs> uh, spiced vodka, really. Uh, German schnapps is more fruity. I, I've actually not tried so many German schnapps, I have to say. Well, yeah. it depends which one, but yeah, usually they are fruity. But 
Ja, som Hellbolt så att säga. Mm. You can get some schnapps in some dragon soup. That's where you can get schnapps. <laughs> How much? What percentage is dragon soup? Well, it's, it's actually dropped to seven point five, but it used to be eight, and all the cans I've seen around here are eight. So, oh, okay. says says a lot about people buying them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Davor's saying that the most common Balkan schnapps is made from blue plums and pears. That sounds quite interesting, actually. Oh, wow, yeah. Plant yeah. Yeah, and right. 40%, yeah. Davor, the, well, so, yeah, Davor, I don't know how, if you guys, I think Harry might have heard me talk about Davor before. I don't know if you have, Christoph, but Davor um, has followed my channel for ages, and it's quite funny. He, like, I found, randomly, I found a Slovenian beer in Edinburgh, Um People of our pellets on the third pill. Just, I just, I just found it randomly in a shop in Edinburgh, and then ever since then, Davor has like followed the channel religiously. Um, he, he decided. Um, he came to Munich. I went to Munich with my cousin. He's like, I'm going to drive up and see you, and I was like, okay. So he drove up to see me and brought like some Slovenian beers, and um, Davor, he like loves. He absolutely loves his Belgian beer. Like if you look at his, he showed me his seller list on Untapped one time, and he's got like some of the stuff that he's got in there is just absolutely. Uh, I've got some Fantone. Some oh, Fantone, he's some Cantillons. Uh, he's got uh, better he, than Cantillon. He's got some. He's got some ridiculous stuff like Alvin and yeah, mm, Cantillon, Phantom and stuff like that. I mean, he's Davor's got some absolutely ridiculous beers in there. Um, I've invited him along to the hangout, but he hasn't got his laptop sorted yet. But Davor is very. I keep trying to encourage him to start his own channel because of just the, the Belgian stuff that he's got. He loves his Belgian beer, but he's like, oh, my English, my English. I'm like, Davor, just do it, man. You'll get better. If, if you're worried about your English, you'll get better at it as you do it more and more. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same Sorry, just not doing English. You know, I, was, I was so nervous when I, when I started, you know, uh, especially when you are, like, tired or you had, like, second or third beer, and then you just starting to lose your English and just, uh, I'm looking for a word, uh, I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, sometimes you can have very interesting impressions. Uh, they are completely different than uh, if you are looking on someone English uh, having the same, the same beer, you have different, completely different impressions. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, you get like, um, I mean, I think the, the, I mean, I watch your reviews, Christoph, and yours, like, I, you can, you can definitely see you get more comfortable with it as, like, as the years have gone on, like, you can see that it develop, it really develops over time. But I mean, I'm the same. Like, I could, I've been thinking about doing some of the classic, you know, Swedish craft beers, like the new, the new Sweden IP. I've been thinking about doing these in Swedish. Because the channels had like such a crazy support from, um, you know, it's uh, it's uh, you know, you're getting. <laughs> I've just seen Craig's comment as well. We'll put that yeah. up in a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, yeah, no, we've uh, there's uh, yeah, I I've been thinking about doing some Swedish reviews as well, and uh, I, I think like I still need to develop a bit more vocabulary for it. But I guess I dare say if I tried it. It'd be a very small audience, right enough, because there's only about 10 million Swedish speakers. But it'd still be quite a cool thing to do, I think. So, yeah. It'd be like Thomas Kopier, who, who who took the the yeah. Polish beer reviews by by storm, and then he's just stopped doing it. But like he was doing, it was the one reviewer who I know is doing everything. Has, has Thomas Kopier quit? Well, I think no, he just, no, he's, he's, he's just slowed down. Ah. He's, no, he's uh, he has like you know very very. Uh, consistent uh, beer reviews. Oh, okay. So he's not stopping. He has you know, new ideas, and you know, he's doing very well. He just stopped uh, his English channel, and uh, it's concentrated yeah. on Polish one. Oh, okay, that'll be it. Yeah. But yeah, Cool is saying after after a few beers, your English gets even better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is a thing, you know. Uh, if you can't say anything, you can show it, isn't it? 
<laughs> oh, this is, well, this is this is one for you, Christoph, because you're the one who doesn't ha who's not the native speaker. Does your English get better after a few beers? Well, of course. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's like a, a play of snooker. Uh, after yeah. a few beers, you are excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think two and a half beer, two and a half beers, and then yeah. you're good. And then yeah. as soon as that third beer hits, you're all fully worse than you were if you'd not drank. Well, I mean, it's no. debatable. It's debatable whether Scottish people speak English anyway. I don't think we really do. I was, was going to say, as Peter joins, yeah. So, uh, a, a non-English really speaker. Yeah, Peter's getting blonder and blonder by the day. The beard's getting yeah, bigger as well. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's growing out. I like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's hey, good. Huh? What's up, well, Dolphy? Well. You know, he does a different blog. <laughs> yeah. We're getting uh, Beery the Gram saying cheers from the Netherlands, and uh, Craig. Yes, we need a good Belgian <laughs> beer reviewer. There's a big gap in the market. There definitely is. So Davor, get your arse in gear. Yeah, get your arse in gear, Davor, and get a few notes. For the Belgian bees. Belgian bees. Belgian bees. <laughs> oh no no no! The, 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 the thread from the other day. Oh my god! <laughs> oh fucking hell! Right, let's yeah, let's not go. Let's not go there. Let's, not go, there. let's <laughs> not go there. We can talk about that when we're offline. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, Davor saying yeah, uh, he agrees. There's lots of new craft breweries, but but Davor, you need to be Davor, the Belgian beer reviewer. Yeah, well, the Belgian brewery. Yeah, the Belgian beer like, reviewer. Davor, man, honestly, your cellar is ridiculous. Go and just go and just review it. Just review it honestly. Watch oh, my yeah. watch yeah. my watch watch my videos. Just copy my vocabulary or whatever, and just do it, man. Go for it because the beers like that. Honestly, I sat with Davor. We sat in. I think it was like one of the Eyinger bars in Munich. We sat in the Eyinger and he took me through all these photos of all these different beers and he remembered everything. Like Davor sat there and remembered everything. And um, like I was just like, Davor, your memory of these beers is, is so, it's ridiculous. I was just like, he needs, he needs to start his own channel. Davor needs to start his own channel, definitely. Mm. Yeah. His own beer trading, because I'll happily trade. Oh yeah, no. Dav Davor's like he Davor's got me like all of the Slovenian beers. Pretty much Davor has got to me over the last while. Like, he he needs to do his own channel. I keep telling him, but he's doesn't he listen? Doesn't he listen? Saying Lewandowski's Brussels beer project got <laughs> brewing, totem, and uh, it's hard to get them to Slovenia. Um, well, Harry, the thing is, Davor Harry's a bit of a dab hand at export and import, so you can seek his consultation. Yeah, if I don't know how, I know someone who knows how. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that he's not managed yet was to get the North Korean Air Force beer to England. Yeah, that was only, quite That's literally difficult. the only one he's failed at, yeah. Although you nearly, you got very close to that from what I remember. I got very close to actually getting it in North Korea. Well, I got it in North Korea and got very close to taking a bottle away from the, from the bar and they're like, no. <laughs> I thought I was like, okay, so we'll just buy it then. And then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was just saying that that beer is only for the North Korean Air Force, is it not? Yep, only for North Korean Air Force. We were at this hotel near a North Korean Air Force base, and it was there. And they said, I was like, I'll have that one. And they said, I knew exactly what it was, I'll have that one. And they said, no, you can't have this. I was like, I'll have that one. And they, no, you can't have it. I was like, that one again. And they said, no, it doesn't exist. No, I'll have that one there. And eventually, doesn't exist. <laughs> It was like it's right in front of my eyes. It doesn't exist. And then right, and then eventually they negotiated and said, "Well, you can have it." And then after that, that it was it wasn't anything special, but like after that, what well, stuff is special when you haven't had beer for like three or four days and you drink Johnny Walker all the time. And um, and yeah, then I think after when I came back, I managed to find someone in South Korea speaking loose, really bad English, who managed to import it through Vietnam. It was just the final getting into the UK was a tricky thing, so then I stopped from there. I could have, I could have maybe got it you from from Vietnam. Yeah, you probably you'd be a handy person right now. 
Um, but back then, it's like, yeah, a bit tricky. Mm. Apparently, there's some good. There's a brewery in Vietnam that are getting a lot of plaudits just now called Heart of Darkness, I think they're called. Uh, they, I, I saw some Vietnam on Beer Dome and there was nothing on there. So I'm guessing it might be a, a tab that was entered for them, possibly. Hmm. Because I wouldn't think what else could you buy from Vietnam? Heart of, I'm sure it's Heart of Darkness. Heart of Darkness Brewery. Vietnam. Saigon. Really. Really. We need more than notes on tapped. Yeah, Heart of Darkness Craft Brewery, Ho Chi Minh City. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Davor's saying you can follow his notes on tap. Davor, just start a channel. <laughs> How many times? Start your channel. <laughs> 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 but it's not yeah. the same not the same you know yeah exactly Unta Davor Untapped is not the same start a channel <laughs> it's Craig Craig you asked that North Korea's actually weirdly got a massive it's got a great craft beer scene yeah in terms of it doesn't have any it's got maybe two big breweries and I can't remember the, the names of it is now. it Taedong Gak um, or something but I've had them. Hey, uh, sure. Yeah, Taedong Gang, and there's an. Uh, let me find it. Well, it can be a uh, uh, secret how many beers they, they produce, you know. Not clear. Uh, there's Taedong, Taedong Gang. Oh, yeah, they don't have to submit beer duty at all. Um, uh, Taedong Gang is the big one, and a, a, a Taedong Gang and Pong Hak is the other one. So Pong Hak tend to brew like a darker, more like a Schwarz beer, and mm. Taedong Gang is more like a standard lager. Um, and I really enjoyed Pong Hak when I was out there, but then you go to when, when that's what you tend to get in the center when you get in Pyongyang. But when you go any further afield, you tend to get like. Um, Fake Taedong Gang, um, and it's Taedong Gang in Qingtao bottles is what got me. Um, and and then there's like, I think we when we're in the uh, Chongjin, which is like uh, North Korea's equivalent to Belfast 50 years ago, uh, it they they basically just got like home home breweries in bars and hotels. So there was one place where we had, I think it was like four or five of us in there we had about 40 pints worth over the night 10 euros please and i'm like yep perfect <laughs> and, uh, that was basically just they had it was like uh this brewery attached to the hotel had all the tanks and had about four or five seats and you just pour out what you want out of the tanks and he just tells you at the end of the night how much he wants for it and we're like cool fine and i, I still don't really think they they understand how cheap that is it's a uh, massive money to them, obviously, but uh, we're just like fine. Well, I think it was fortune for them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Us turning up once in a blue moon. Yeah, no, I think that's. We definitely need to get your brother to. We need to do the group tour and then get your brother to help us stay on for a few days and do some beer filming and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we. I'm sure. You're allowed to film in South Korea, in North Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I filmed all my trip when I was out there. I put it on YouTube as well. Okay. I, I didn't film very much because I didn't have my camera that I got now, and the camera I had was a DSLR, so it's really tricky to film videos on it. Um, it wasn't a good DSLR, basically. Um, and I filmed. Yeah, I did. I didn't do any beer reviews, but I did uh, the videos out there. Um, but there's plenty of good bars. There was one bar which. Um, had all the beers were numbered in terms of like, and that seems to be a bit of a Russian thing as well, like with the Baltica style, uh, mm. where they just had number the beers in terms of um, naming the beers, and they just numbered the beers like one to nine, um, and they just didn't have names of them at all, and it was just, I'll have a one please, or I'll have a three, and you didn't really know what, not what you were getting, so everyone ordered something different. 
um, and tried a little bit of each, and he didn't really know very much. So a lot of it got lost in translation, I guess, but yeah, it was good fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Davor's saying he's good with Untap Davor, man. Channel. Do it. And we have... Paul. Paul. Hey, honey bun. Hi, Paul. My face. I wonder what's happened to... Re- I was just talking about Paul. Um, I wonder what's happened to Ree Leno tonight. Mm. Ree Leno. Ree Leno. to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Ray Leno craft rear's usually on, but yeah, no, that well, that's a good point. Rob's not here, so uh, yeah. Ray Leno, uh, Leno's not here. That's unusual, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> so what happens when it's the same person? Mm. <laughs> I realised I'd sat on my bottle opener. It was not very really smart. Do you enjoy it? Uh, Craig saying that he's going to have a number two. <laughs> yeah, be good if we can get Craig on a little bit later on as well. Um, Yeah. Uh, I've got the Canon 600D. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It's only funny because Paul is just like, Paul just embraces that whole sexual enigma thing that he has. He's like a 69D or something like that. Yeah, 600D. <laughs> uh, high sugar. <laughs> it's just when you know how Paul does that grin when he speaks. It's like, that's why yeah. it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we've got, oh, Thomas is watching this now. Someone <laughs> looking for a real anal. Yep, always looking Thomas, for real anal. Thomas, do you want to join up, jump in for a little bit? I've not checked if he's messaged me back yet, actually. Let's... But Thomas, yeah, if you want to jump in just to say hello for a few minutes, feel free. There's no pressure to stay for, like, uh, for a long time or whatever. It's up to you. Uh... In, in, in response to uh, Paul's original post, I said said to Harry today. I was thinking of uh, looking at getting G sweets. Um, it's only four pound. It was like four pound fifty five a month, but you get Google Meets. But well, because it's the G sweets version, you can stream straight from Google Meets. Oh, okay. So, I so I think I'm going to get that for a, at least till September. Hmm. Yeah, I mean Google. Uh, Google Meets could be quite cool because yeah, you're wanting to focus your channel on live streams, yeah. aren't you, Adam? Yeah. Yeah, and at the moment my internet is not the strongest at times, and I think that Google Meets seemingly you get a better output than you do on Streamyard. What's up, guys? Uh, hello. Yo, Thomas. Hello. How's it going? Hi, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. So I think Thomas. I think Thomas, the only one you haven't met here is Christoph, who is Ale Degustations. I think you've Christoph? met everybody else. Um, yeah, I think I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Clueless drinker, blue nose. Uh, Adam, I'm not sure if I've met Adam. I think I have. I, I've been on the chat before, but I don't think I've been on video with you. No, I don't think I, I don't think we share the chat uh, video chat. No. Uh, yeah, just no, popping uh, in for a few minutes, just saying hi. Yeah, no, it's good. It's always nice, always nice to have you. We're missing, yeah. we're missing our, yeah, we're missing our friend Ree Lanel. I don't know what's happened to him tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's what the reason why I popped in. I mean, the obsession of a, with real anal is really getting a bit. Um, <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there anything you need to share, man? Yeah, everyone, Ray everyone loves real anal. Real anal, real, 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 well, except a certain, except a certain somebody. Um, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> except everyone except a certain somebody loves really no, really no craft rear. I don't know where he's, he is. Yeah, he's oh, still he? banned from Simon's channel. He's banned from Simon's channel. Yeah. Why did he get banned from Simon's channel? I can only assume the name. There's nothing wrong with oh, that. Right. <laughs> oh, su- that doesn't really surprise me at all. He doesn't like real anal. That's why. I'm not really not commenting on that one at all. Really, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not because that's really going to derail this chat, and you might actually get just this thing might not ever get uploaded at all. <laughs> so, what are you guys drinking? That's a point. I need to get a refill actually, and uh... all right. I've got the last of my Thornbridge order, which is the market, market Porter. 
It's not Belgian. It's not Belgian, it's shite. It's not Belgian, it's shite. <laughs> like, I, I had that. I, I bought that from uh, Waitrose randomly. All right. A uh, couple, couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I on, How is it? it? It's really nice. A lot of coffee in it. Really creamy coffee, Ooh. basically. And for I say for a porter, it's, it, it's you're getting close to stout territory, hmm. especially the low ABV that it is. Yeah, it's quite um, ABV, is it? I think it's really like four point. It's like four point nine. Four, Four point five. Wow, that really is pretty old school for uh, for a porter in terms of ABV. Feels like everybody's trying to. Sorry, yeah. I, I was going to say I had it on cask first time. Um, one of the bars in Liverpool oh. had it on cask. And I saw nice. it in my order. And I thought, well, yeah, I'll stick a bottle on. Oh, it sounds lovely. It sounds lovely. But really, it's like lately with all all these standard porters, like they're all being brewed. Six six percent ABV or higher, really, and you don't really see a lot of those sub five percent porters anymore. At yeah. least that's a, from my point of view. Yeah, it's all materials these days, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, I think I still have a can of a four point something percent Buxton porter somewhere here. I think it's on the counter over there. But do you think that's because? The stout, the the, the stout, um, even with lowest ABV stouts, they're usually around six. Do you think that just sort of pushed the entire concept of the low ABV porter rate way, or why do you think that is? That people just sort of, the brewers sort of shy away from those low ABV porters. Is it shit? I think sometimes. We, I think sometimes. Yeah, I don't don't think they sell too well. No. no. Oh, um, Thomas, we've got a question for you. I don't know how long you're staying for, but Davor is asking this one. Uh, a... Yeah, just now. Um, oof, uh, when did you review it? I reviewed it, I think, about a month ago. And um, I got it from the brewer itself uh, from Bucks about three months ago, I think, two or three. I wasn't really sure about its age, but that's the thing that confused me a bit because I think on the can they kept talking about it being a farmhouse uh, uh, slash saison, and then on untapped it spoke of a farmhouse IPA. If I knew it was more towards an IPA beer, I might have drank it a bit fresher, but I really have to say that even with that little bit of age on it, that was one stunning farmhouse crike beer, really something you don't see a lot here in the Netherlands. I loved it. Have you had it, by the way, then? Davil, or any of you guys, if any of you had that particular, um, what was it called again? Um, I'm going to look up what it is called. It was a collab between um, Bach Spear from the Netherlands, Lobig, and uh, Chien Blue. Don't know if any of you know that brewery, but. I don't know the home now. That's, I mean, when I come and see you guys in September or so, I need, yeah, you guys need to gather up some local. Dutch stuff for me, and I'll bring down some Swedish stuff, and we can film. So oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah, no, that, will, that will be good. Yeah, I'm, I found the flights. I looked at the flights, and the flights are reasonable. So I just need. I'm waiting to hear to see if I can sort. So, you know the guy I told you about in Belgium. Yeah, uh, Chris. Um, I'm going to see if I can meet him in Brussels as well in Du Cantillon. So see about that. Yeah, that sounds, want, that sounds great. Is it Herbin that lives close to Destroyza as well? No, no, no. None of us live close to Destroyza. Uh, Herbin lives pretty close to the Molen. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, no, because it was what I'd love to do, actually. It'd be cool to do to go with Remy. Remy was saying that he's very he's from Alkmaar, so it'd be awesome to go and do like a a thing in Alkmaar oh, for the Moors he, Lutel with him. He, he, you know, he, he, uh, 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 he's not from Al- um, he, he's not in Alkmaar. He came from Alkmaar, he's, but he does pop back to Alkmaar every now and then. Um, but no, uh, I think, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Closest brewery for you to go to um, if you're near Gerben or Remy would be... I know where you need to go. You need to go to Utrecht. You need to go to the Kromme Haring. Is that the one you said that's the fridge thing? No, that was a different. That was in Maastricht. Kromme Haring is a brewery that has some, uh, does a lot of great, um, some uh, mixed fermentation stuff, uh, does some great uh, stuff with, um, what's it called? The Britain Mices. 
If you check my channel, I think it was an English review even, you can find a great review of a, a Brettit Porter I did. That would You guys would love that. It had that real unique, original Brett dryness that you need in a porter, if you ask me. You're going to love Gorma Harding. I'll try and see if I can get you some Gorma Harding when you come over. Yeah, no, that would be awesome. That would definitely be awesome to do. Um, mm -hmm. I need, yeah, I need to, uh, you need to do that. So I'm talking about this England tour. So I think um, maybe Peter, I've been talking about this. So Harry and I, I think, are going to do a few things in Bristol. Then I'll meet up with Craig in London and maybe Jake can do a few things. And then sort of Liverpool, Manchester will be Peter and Adam. And then yeah. uh, maybe Leeds can do with Rob. And then we can go up to Newcastle and do something with Christoph. We can maybe film at Wylam or something. So it'll be quite cool, actually, mm -hmm. when I get this England trip. Bas basically, I'm flying to Bristol and just taking the long way home um, <laughs> and just uh, meeting up with these guys. So film, be quite cool to film like a little meet the blogger Sounds type good. thing. So Yeah. yeah. And let, Peter, let you and I... Sorry. Sorry? I was going to say, let us know how many days you come up to the Northwest and me and Peter can put our heads together. We can do a little, uh, a little route, maybe. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm... yeah, we can sort something out. Even though Adam will probably end up being the one. Yeah, I, I mean, the other, the other thing is exactly when am I going to do this? Because obviously, I need to. If the if the Japanese border opens up, I'd rather, I'd, I'd, I need to get over there and see the little guy. But um. Yeah, no, that's I want. I think the next time I go home, I want to do a sort of Englandish tour and uh, go back up. Simon asked me if I wanted to go over to Cardiff as well, so that's another thing that can be added in. So that could that could Barry be, Island IPA. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, for the that could be quite interesting to uh, to try actually. Um, well, you can you get that's in real life, right? Sorry, quite sorry. Uh, I, I don't know who spoke there. We both spoke at the same time. I think it was Adam. Adam, Sorry. you go first, mate. You, no, no, you go no, first, okay. mate. All I was going to say is you can go not exactly direct Liverpool to Cardiff, but you can go via crew. Quite, it's quite an easy train. Mm. Well, I was thinking probably my plan was to go to... I can fly to Bristol from Copenhagen for very cheap. So my thought was do that, then I can... Uh, meet Harry. Either that, or I could go straight from Bristol. I could do things in Bristol. Well, no, I think. Well, I could go to Cardiff, see Simon, then come back to Bristol, meet Harry, because I think the the way that I planned it was to be in Bristol for the weekend with Harry. So I could go and see Simon before that, come over a few days earlier, see Harry, go to London, see Craig and uh, and Jake if Jake can sort it as well, then um, make my way to. Liverpool's further south, isn't it? Which one's further south? Liverpool or Manchester? Uh, they're more or less level. It's just Liverpool's out west. Yeah, well, east, well, I mean, yeah, because then the next, yeah, the next stop after that would be you guys, and then I'd maybe go to Leeds and try and get Rob, and then it yeah. would be I'd stop in Durham, see a few pals, and then uh, head, you know stop off on the way home, try and get into Newcastle and get Christoph as well. Um, and then home. It's, prob it's probably quicker to go from Manchester to Leeds than Liverpool to Leeds because you've got to go through Manchester anyway. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm game for yeah. whatever. I mean, uh, it's just yeah. the thing is, in terms of setting up, it, the other thing would be your advice on setting up like accommodation and shit like that because whether do we okay. want to get an Airbnb or and stay close in the town for a night or two or what do we want to do? So, yeah, that's the other thing. I know someone that owns um, some service departments, so I could probably sort something out. Yeah, no, that could be cool. I mean, it's, it's, it'd be. I mean, if I'm in your sort of neck of the woods, you know the the Liverpool breweries very well, and I'd quite like to go and do like an on-site film at like Track and Cloudwater and some, and maybe the was it Marble Brewery was the old pub one that we went to that time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Marble yeah, Arch. Yeah, no, I, I quite fancy doing some more. On site stuff yeah. and things and and things and doing that. So we're, we're doing Cloudwater, their uh, tap, mm. their their new place compared to the old place. Yeah, because that's it. Yeah, if when I go to see Thomas, we're going to do it. It's that's a bottle share basically. So I'm going to pick mm. out some of my favourite Swedish stuff to take down. Um, 
And then, yeah, when I see you guys, I'm going to try and bring some nerd brewing over for you because, uh, yeah, I did the in- that was really cool. Yes, that was really cool doing the interview with uh, with Hannes, and he was like, "Yeah, I know my beer's very hard to get, so if you want to give some to the other dudes, then just let me know." So I was like, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah that would- is is nerd brewing easy? Easily, uh, readily available for any of you guys. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing James can get it pretty easily, but it started appearing. Yeah, it, it is now for me. Like um, me and my mate have just done like a bit of swap, and we can get about five different bottles of their Imperial Stout. But that's mm. all. Just, really? just Imperial, just Imperial Stout. I but see, see to be great. honest. For me as well, though, this is the thing, is because of the Sustainable Agate system, I either have to bring it in from Denmark, which is about 30% more expensive, um, or I can only get like one or two different types through Sustainable Agate. Um, How much is it per bottle in, in pounds? Oh, um, wait a second. Let me figure that out for you. Depending on, from on average, around here, the eight euros? It's, it, yeah, it's, it's nine pounds to about... 12 13 is what I've seen here, yeah. But generally, we, generally the same price, yeah. They're pretty readily available here. We get we get new bottlings every now and then, and usually about six or seven different ones in, in a batch. And yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I gotta say, I'm impressed. Uh, do, do, do any of you know where they're being brewed? What Nerd Brewing, yeah, it's it's a gypsy brewer, right? Well, it's it's um I interv- I don't know if you saw that Thomas, but I actually interviewed the brewer and I just published it yesterday. Um I'm completely behind, so I'll, I need to catch up this weekend. I'm very much behind. So well Oh no, no, so so that's good. Um but you know, Hannes his name's Hannes and um they're brewed in Malmö. There's basically it's like um there's three companies, three brands brew uh, it's called Lila Ulfabriken and it's in it's in Malmö in Ro- near Rosengord. Mm-hmm. And um, I filmed the interview that I filmed with Hannes. There was filmed at his brewery, and um, he, uh, yeah, it's, it's, he, he brews these beers. He shares this with Lila Ulfabrik and li- the Little Beer Factory and uh, Chad Beer. And there's another brewery next door that is okay. um, that is called uh, South Plains Brewery. So South Plains is owned by an American guy. Lil Fabrikin, I think, is Swedish owned, and then Chad Beer is owned by an Australian guy. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, he's he's brewing. They've got like if you look at if watch the video because I show you the, the tanks and shit like that that they're doing. Mm. Um, but you know, I interviewed him and he gave me some. He gave me a few of the different beers and stuff to try. Um, and I said to him, "Look, I want I want to take some of your beers for the." Um, you know, I'd like to give some of your beers to the English guys and to the Dutch guys and to the the Japanese. But it's just difficult to get them. And he says, "Well, just tell me." And he was like, "Just you know, just uh, if you want to take some beers for the other guys, just drop me a message." And yeah, so it's well, for the, for any of you who haven't had um, any of their beers uh, so far from Nurburgring, you really should. They're amazing. Some of the best stouts I've had lately, and uh, I'd say their oak their oak program. The oak uh, H1s are pretty good, so definitely go for it. it, it they might be a bit pricey, but worth it if you ask me. Mm. They're not out for Delta. <laughs> yeah. Out for Delta. Oh, we can do a brand new IPA. It's going to be £17. Pounds. It's not bad. Yeah. It's they not can't, quite they can't, that. Can't, it's, it's almost that. They can't do a beer under £6.50. That would be impossible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. I think I've seen maybe a six pound one, and that was it was five point five. That's why it was six pound. Yeah, but and, anything and a, that's like, but it's a brand new brewery no one's ever heard of before as well, which is just adds to the stupidity of it all. He's got to get his money back somehow. Yeah, but fucking, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not letting him get his money back. <laughs> so okay, not getting my money to get his money back. He'll have to starve. Yeah. People are paying it. Yeah. I'm sure. People will pay the weirdest amounts yeah. of money for the weirdest beers. You seen um you seen one of the Matt's uh mystery beers from uh, last Monday. No. Uh, the, the the let's let's say that it, 
a quite an appetizing looking beer from um I don't want to spoil it for in case you guys haven't seen it, but he had a mystery beer uh, by uh, Decker. Okay. Any of you oh, guys? Uh, any ha 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 Deck Decker were over in Copenhagen for a while, but I never tried anything. Uh, looking at what the beers are and the price range, I just I can't justify myself paying something, paying that amount of money for something that just doesn't come off as beer to me at all. Is that just me? Yeah. Yeah, and no, I think I think beer there are there is a point where beers just get I mean, like for example, Hop and Frog. I've never tried anything from Hop and Frog because they're always like twenty euros for a a big bottle. And I'm just like, you know, if I can pay you know, why would I pay twenty you twenty euros for mm. an American bottle of an American barley wine and you know I can get uh for twenty euros I can get maybe I can get five six like really good swedish beers i'm just like well that, that, that said P peter and i um when we did marlborough piss up we had a um bottle that came I, I, I used to do an online subscription from beer gonzo and it came in my gonzo box and it was their angel cake uh, and it was just nuts absolutely nuts it just tasted like angel cake mm -hmm. um in a beer, and it was so sweet. Uh, it was. I think Angel Cake was my favourite beer of the of that night. But Peter has a fav different favourite ale of that night, mm -hmm. which was the American Solera. I think was your favourite beer. Oh, that was gorgeous. That was. Just... It was pretty good. Yeah. I oh, know. I've heard they're very yeah. a very good brewery, actually. Yeah. Mm. I'm just going to grab a refill, guys. So I'll be back in a few, Sorry. like a minute or two. I will I tell you what before I bugger off we'll do some of the comments because I see we've got more um, um, Davor yeah so Davor said that he had a tap there you know, of that beer he was asking Thomas about um, but he liked the can version better Paul saying he always enjoy the brews that comes out of the profi even when it's contract brews he's wanting to head over next year always nice to have Paul Peter and I talked about Storm in Scotland. If you do, I will definitely fly home for that. Mm -hmm. um, I still need to hit Berwick upon Tweed and Hadrian's Wall. There's not too much of Hadrian's Wall left. Nerd Brewing go to Beer Dome, from what Davor said. There's nothing in Berwick. Yeah, there's not a lot in Berwick, yeah. Mm. Eskils Tuna is a brewery that's alluded me. Paul, I'll bring, I'll see, I will I'll can order some and bring you that when I make it out to the States. My friend's <sighs> wedding in September has been postponed, so next June is looking likely for the date. So if you so if you have Swedish beers you want, Paul, let me know and I can bring some for you. That's no problem. Um the Nerd Brew I had a Nerd Brewing Barley wine. Ah yeah, no, that's um that's the one that I reviewed Davor, the finally the Nerd if you guys see the Nerd Brewing Barley wine finally. It's uh, that's really good. That's worth a try. Um oh, yeah, Brett, Brett, hello. Mm. Um Brett is saying hello uh, I'll grab some hop and frog this year when I got pissed. Oh, that would be awesome, yeah, Paul. If you can get me some hop and frog, if they've got a Scotch ale, I know they've got a barley wine, but if they've got the Scotch ale or barley wine, either of those would be cool. I'll grab the ones I enjoyed for you, but see, Taurus the Tyrant, there's only one. That bitch is mine. Yeah, <laughs> no, but I've, I had that one. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not too ashamed to admit I drank a 65 centiliter bottle of that one all by myself, and it was glorious. Triple oatmeal Russian Imperial style bourbon barrel aged. I think it was about. I think I think I pay about twenty two euros for that. So for a sixty five centiliter bottle, I, I don't think that's. I think that's pretty decently priced for triple oatmeal Imperial style barrel aged. Yeah, mm, that's decent. Yeah, right. I'm just gonna grab. I'm just gonna grab uh, another beer, and I'll be back in like two minutes, guys. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Taurus the time was on sale here for £34. £34. I'll do it one better. Just a few weeks ago, I found uh, I found a 75 centilitre bottle of uh, Sal from the brewery. You know that one? Mm -hmm. 13 euros. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's, it's nuts. 
<laughs> yeah, I was kind of happy with that one. I'm sure I'm saving it. James already knows that. I'm saving that one for the bottle share when James is coming over. I figured a three year old brewery, um, bourbon barrel aged all day seems quite fitting That's for a bottle share. That's fair. I, I've just gone and bought um, the evil twin. Oh my god, he's a bozo. Mm. Um, just bought a bottle of that. I, it, it was it, not the cheapest bottle of beer in the world. Uh, it was about £23 I paid for it, which was the cheapest I found as well. How so much? That beer, £23. That's not... That's a 65 centilitre? Yeah, but it, the that's most expensive bad. I saw for it was about £28, and it's and it's only recent, it only came on the market this week. So yeah, because it's just 23 like, yeah, and I, I say like, that's yeah, fair. I'll have it. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was, I was like, it's fair, but at the same time, I'm like, well, it's a lot of money to pay, pay for one beer. But in the US, I, I just thought it'd be, be interesting. Yeah, you know, it's not something I, I know guys who will regularly pay 25, 30 euros for big bottles continuously all the time. Hmm. And just like James said earlier, I, I'd rather pay it, I'd rather buy five or six other very yeah. good beers for the same yeah. amount. But just, Every now and then, every now and then, to just sort of you know treat yourself and just like you did with the Evil Twin, just one of those big bottles, yeah. and either share it with friends or just you know kick back yeah, on a Sunday fun. and just yeah, sure. It's, like I said, share it with friends or just every now and then, just open one of those bottles and just take a long Sunday afternoon just all by yourself. It's, it's just a little treat for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to sell. I've got loads of distros of Black Damnation. Mm. I've been trying to sell them because I'm just like. I'm not going to drink these. And it's like I have one every six months or so, but I've got uh, Black Mares, Major Tom. I've got like four or five left, and I put them on a on a trading uh, slash, well, a, a, a raffle site. I had like two or three people ask for it, and I was like, nah, <laughs> just, I'll just close it down because no, no one's asking for it. So I just close it down. And really? Just save them for a bottle share. People just want juice. They just want juice and milk and hype and shit like that. I really don't think they understand the concept of what a Strauser Black Damnation I, I mean, Out of the ones I've had, I've loved them. Maybe. We, we did all of them up to 15 in one day. Uh, with a couple of mates, and it was fantastic. I can't remember very much afterwards, but oh. it was great. We enjoyed it, um, and that's a, that's the main part, really. Well, it was um, a good session. It was a good <laughs> session. It was <laughs> definitely. Yeah, session. I thought it was sessionable. Eh? Oh, Have yeah, you ever had uh, any of you guys ever had uh, bonapot by uh, by the Stars? Uh, no, no, but I'm after it. You yeah, should you know, really. really really look up on a pot. It's one of their best beers, if you ask me. It's a great old ale. And uh, they range from versions that are between a year, two year barrel aged uh, until the Grand Reserves that have been barrel aged on. There's different versions of it, five years on, on God knows what. They're just amazing, they're stellar. They're not the cheapest, but they're fantastic. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I've seen it about like in, in bars and stuff, but it's always been like they've run out of it by the time I've got there. So I can speak to one of my mates. He might have it because he definitely owes me a favour after what I did for him last night uh, tonight. If P Peter would have seen that uh, two spots randomly filled on uh, on, oh, on yeah. sips, I'm not paying for them. <laughs> I'm not paying for those. I'm gonna have them. to shoot off. I'll see you again another time. Say goodbye, right. James. Sorry. All right, yeah. see you later. Cool. Bye. See you later. Have a good one, Ed. Yeah, I got asked to fill those spots, and he's like, I owe you. I was like, cool. I'll have a beer. Fair dues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if you just, win, though? If I win, I said to him that he can take it, he can just have it. Yeah. Which, because he's a bar, so I was just like, you know, there's my donation to you. Oh, well, I mean, that's fair. They can use, they can use donations, right? I mean, there you go. yeah, yeah, support yeah. local right. business. Yeah, I just quickly money. 
<laughs> I just quickly noticed a, co a comment by Davo in the co uh, something I want a um, question he had. Uh, if I ever had the wrong course of Midnight Porter, Heaven Hill, Bourbon Barrel H, it's on standby. Uh, if you, I'm assuming you mean the, the number 22. It's on standby. I was planning on filming a review actually this weekend. Um, so if you're interested, I might actually review it in English and uh, upload it uh, somewhere soonish because I know as James keep bugging me about it that I need to do more English reviews. Yes. Oh, will you? Yes, he just, yes, fine. <laughs> oh, I'll try. Because I just, I have to start, I notice that my, my English reviews just, they're not uh, watched as much as my Dutch ones, but I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I just, I, don't, I mean, I still don't get that with that you guys are like so apprehensive about your English and it's like. Oh, I'm not. Well, I mean, well, Netherlands is like, out, you know, the best countries in the world for English, non-native English speaking. It's, it, you know, it's the Nordic countries and it's the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but, you know, it's, it's, it's mostly uh, Remy who's a bit apprehensive about his English. Um, Gerben and I aren't because really I'm, I'm much more comfortable with English than I am with Dutch anyway. But it's just... Uh, we're still trying to sort of get into the um, community, I suppose. And then for the, Dutch, the Dutch community isn't really that big on reviewing. And if you, we do a lot of it in English, we'll just lose a little bit of that community, I suppose. So we just kind of want to find a balance there. Mm, I suppose, yeah, I can get that. Oh, we lost Adam. I see we lost Adam. Yeah, yeah no, oh, he just said, he said bye. Yeah, he wanted to say goodbye. I just had the experience, you know, to, to work in uh, Norway and I had no problems with, uh, you know, speaking English there. So, yeah, it's just very easy to communicate in Scandinavia. Hmm. Hmm. All right. What? Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry, I saw a comment pop by. <laughs> in Nor I mean, Norway, the Norwegians are very, very good at English, definitely. I mean, the Swedes are very good as well. I mean, I can under these days, I can understand Norwegian. I can't, obviously, I can't. It's the same with the Danish. I can understand, well, I suppose it's debatable if I can understand the Danes to listen to them because their language is very throaty, but I can understand the Norwegians to listen to them. I can read Danish and Norwegian and understand what it means. But if you speak to them, you answer in Swedish and they answer you in Danish, and it's like you can somehow <laughs> understand each other. It's like when I listen to when I listen to the Dutch reviews, it's like there's a bit of you know you get there's a bit of German, there's a bit of the Nordic languages, there's a bit of the English in there. So yeah, you, yeah. You, like you know what you know what they're talking about, but you're like right, I don't I don't get exactly what you're saying. But yeah, I'm sorry, Christoph. When it comes to Polish, I've got no clue. <laughs> That's like me having a conversation with Adam. It's very similar. Uh, Two different languages. <laughs> Brummy, <in the> North. <laughs> How did well? That's an interesting kind point. of scouts. That's an interesting reviews, you know, it would be fun for you. <laughs> <laughs> How did you? Well, that's an interesting point, Christoph. How did you get on with the different accents and stuff like that when you? Uh, you. How long have you been in 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 uh, Newcastle area now? How long have you been over there? Uh, well, uh, now it will be fifteen years. Hmm. First, I didn't realize it had been that long. I thought you'd been there like five years or something. No, no, I've, I've started in London, but I had a very interesting way to learn English because uh, the, well, compulsory, it was Russian uh, back then when I was uh, learning. Mm -hmm. So first touch of English, uh, it was a uh, year eight, or nine, something like this. Uh, and then, of course, I had uh, in high school, I had the uh, English and Russian. But English, I wasn't very fortunate. Every year I had a new teacher, so they, they, they've been starting from the beginning. So I didn't learn much. Uh, then when I started studies, we had uh, like two years English course, and it wasn't very good as well. Um, so yeah, I was just uh, watching watching films, trying to do some sub subtitles uh, to my DVDs, <laughs> you know, and that's how was how I was learning English, and of course games, 
Yeah. yeah. There was uh, very little games in Polish uh, back then, in the 90s. Yeah. So I had no other choice. I had to learn English. Yeah, because I mean, I know that po Polish is just as a language. Polish is mental. I mean, it's like 12 or 13 verb cases. It's like, um, no. well, is, is it not like, is it not like Piesni? Is it not? I remember something like my Polish friend Dominika, who's she'd be like the best university lecturer ever because she's just mental. But um, she used to tell me like, what is it? Piesnichne is like wheat, but then Piesnichne is like apartment or something. Because uh, I remember, I remember like the Polish words that I know. What is that? It was like um, Nastrovie pivo, um, Piesnichne, Piesnichna, uh, Nastrovie. <laughs> You know the you know the um, best words, you know the Kurva. Uh, you have pivo. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> uh, you have pivo, like a beer, uh, and then you know well, that's and and few swear words, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. I, love I love it how you. I love it how you're so polite about that, Christoph. It's like literally, my friend Dominique oh, was no. like every every <laughs> second word was like curva match, curva I match. I don't know if if you notice, but if uh, with every language, first what you learn is the swear words. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Basic. Yeah. Like in in Swedish, it's like fee fan. Yeah, fan is like the bad word in Swedish. Do I want to know what that means? Mm. Depends what, yes. what it means. In it's it's, it's multi-contextual. It's multi-contextual. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I know that it is a, a problem for uh, English-speaking guys to, to learn uh, Slavic languages because it, it's in the group four, uh, for hardest languages, and then later it's just Japanese. Well, I, I, I've actually done. I mean, I I studied Japanese for obvious reasons. I don't find Japanese that bad, to be honest with you. The hard thing with the hard uh, you know, the, uh, when you need to learn, it's not so bad. Yeah, I mean, I I did a Russian course. I love. I, I mean, I I've got a weird almost fetish for Russian history. It's one of my history teachers at school loved. Russia and he taught us you know all the revolutions and stuff so I did like two semesters ago at university I did a Russian course and we learned all like oh kak vas de la Strasvitsia you know um kak de bratsia reportia and you know we learned it's the very basic stuff to ask basic questions and then um, he's, he's, he's just showing off now it's just <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, I'm, I've not tried Dutch yet I'll try Dutch you can laugh at me then Thomas but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, teach, teach, I'll teach you I'll teach you a good swear some few good swears in, in Dutch in, uh, yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll make that work I know some good German this serious bullshit oh yeah I know some good English ones but Bel Belgian Belgian ones Belgian <laughs> Belgian 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 isn't it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We've fallen. Back. Let me just go through. I'll get stressed if I don't go through some of these comments. So yeah, we don't Paul, want to stress. Uh, we don't want to stress yeah. James. <laughs> I'm always like that. I'm like, oh, if people are commenting. We need to like say. Um, so yeah, Paul's saying he'll grab me. Uh, oh, we went through that earlier. So I'll fight him for it. But Paul will probably win. So yeah. Um, there was just the, the start of night for me. Very set. That's like you, Harry. That, is this where you get this? That Paul influencing you, the whole session ability type thing. No, it's just like I've become a brewer. Right? It's just natural life. I mean, you've been not a Belgian brewer. Tomorrow, well, it's tomorrow, just tomorrow, alcohol. Well, it's, <laughs> tomorrow I got a brew day, but you know, just yeah. got to brew through it, work hard, and so, brew the beer, and then just go home and then just session. Yeah, yeah. thirty dollars. It's one of the brews where I could say it was worth it. Well, that's good. Yeah, I need I need to try more beers from Ohio. That's a state I've not really kind of touched on, but yeah. Um, Davor saying, yeah, though, yeah, that's the one you answered earlier. Um, American wise, so far it's been white chocolate from the brewery, and Cigar City's the way that that's spelled. It just makes me think of our friend. Brewery. Oh, that's one that I want to try. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> Cigar City, <laughs> Hanafi. I, I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. and Afu from Cigar City. I've heard so much about that, but never tried it. I used to be able um, to get it quite easily. 
No well, see if you ever get it again, Harry. Keep me a, a can or a bottle or whatever, and yeah, I'll square you up. Yeah, because um, yeah, Harry's the magic importer, definitely. Cheers, um, Ashley. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, was the Black Damnation good? By a mixed grill, okay. Yes, that's the ones yeah. I had. Uh, Killian enjoying Sean Tambry here in France. Cheers, fellas. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Uh, oh, yeah, Killian commented before. I'd love to do more French beers. The, the French beers are really good, but it's, you know, it's like the Russian stuff. It's really good, but it's just impossible to get. Yeah, exactly. That's, it's very, very yeah, it's hard to get hold of. You know, you have no problems with the, you know, communication with French, right? It's so close, but, mm. but you don't really have much beers in England from France. No. Yeah, but it's because all the white. I mean, it's just, it's, it's all the wine. It's it's the wine this yeah. is problem, but France, why? Well, I mean, you can look at it from the. I mean, if you look at the Netherlands as well, the Netherlands has got some awesome beers, and but we always get the Belgian and the German stuff. It's just you've got these two big beer exporting countries right next to it. I mean, if you think Spain, France, Italy, they're all known for their wine, so that's why you don't get so much of the beer from them. The whole focus is just on a different product isn't mm -hmm. it i think that's maybe a fair argument but no oh, i'm not sure but you know i i get annoyed i was quite gutted recently actually on the topic of france one of my favorite beer shops i've ever been to it's called la cababoule in paris and uh, it shut down the guy shut it down a few months ago and i was gutted i really wanted to go back there and just go nuts on buy like the whole is that, that really small shop no, like no, it's, it's actually really oh. no, no, it's actually quite big. Um, I, I was gutted about that when I read it. I've got a barley wine. Um, it's a collaboration. I've got a barley wine sitting at home that will end up being review number five thousand or some shit. Um, and it's like um, it, it's like a collaboration between the guys at that shop and Brasserie Saint Rioul or something. It's like one with a little frog on it. Um, but the, the French beers, I, I think I'd be interested to know, I, I've said this in a few of my reviews, and I think to hear your opinions would be interesting. I think that it's kind of an unwritten rule in Europe that if a country is good at winemaking, when they try beer, they really tend yeah. to be pretty damn good at it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I'm reading yeah. a book at the moment, which is talking, it's all about Spanish beer. And, and Spain is a country which you never think about when it, when mm. it comes to craft beer i'll tell you uh, no we, i think that i think that really changed because spain is some of my favorite beers from the last few months have come from spain yeah but oh, edge garage not, basque land yeah mm -hmm. uh peninsula doing some great ipas um i don't really agree with the concept of uh if they make great wines they make great beers i think that so far, my experience has been, but maybe that's because my experience from those countries is a bit limited, but I think that when they've mastered the grape, they've failed the grain. Mm. Mm. I don't know, because I've, I've had one or two nice French beers. One of my favorite is from, uh, was uh, uh, Nevermore by uh, La Debouche. It's a great imperial stout, but I can't really remember if, I've had a, if I had a great Italian beer. Uh, did you guys ever... There's, there's been a few. I think we, we used to get a few about three or four years ago and then I've had, it all I've just had some fell off. okay Italian beers. I mean, yeah. one, I mean, one, if I, like, one that I would chip in here and say is uh, Birificio Italiano Tipo Pills. That's a mm -hmm. beautiful, that's a beautiful, beautiful beer. It's mm. supposed to be, someone commented on one of my videos recently and said that Tipo Pills is supposed to be a you said tribute that beautifully, to by the way, James. Yeva. I said it beautifully, yeah, fabulous. Not as beautiful as you, Peter. But yeah, no, but um, Tipo Pills oh, is supposed to you. be awesome. Well, that mean yeah. no harm. Yeah. Um, okay. You're beautiful as well, don't worry. We're all beautiful. We're all beautiful. Own way. I feel better now. Well, like, per Paul was flirting with Ashley in the <laughs> comments. Kind of poor. Gang banging uh, in, in, in the chat. Killian Hallou. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just gonna flick through these quickly. Um hundred percent lived in Maastricht and people spoke better English than back home. Interesting. I want to learn English as <laughs> well. <laughs> uh aside from a guy 
drinking in Canada, I don't interact with the French speaking beauty. I didn't know there was French. Well, I suppose it makes sense, obviously, but I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know of. I didn't know of any yeah. French speaking beer tubers in Canada. Um, uh, I, know, I think I have one or two, but I, I like. Why I? Why I? Why I? That's Eastern uh, Europe. Yeah, uh, running Not all just of running. Europe. Can you imagine that this? Here's an image for you: Paul <laughs> Romali in a in one of the blue, you know, one of the one of the blue uh, Adidas tracksuits with the white stripes down his arms. Can you imagine yes. that? Oh, that would be fucking lovely. You can you can find lots of um, strange. Uh, language things borrowed from uh, from English, uh, Polish or whatever uh, Slavic languages that means something completely different. Mm. Uh, like Adidas, it's only uh, shoes, right? If you mm -hmm. if you have uh, running shoes, well, this is Adidas. It doesn't matter what, what the brand is, it's Adidas. Uh, if you if you are talking about um, tracksuit, it's dress. Oh. Oh, so that's the that the put that you mean these are the Polish words for these things. Yes. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. So it, it can be quite confusing, ah. isn't it? Right. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. It's, the, the, the the one word I know in in Polish is tripoloski. Is that three stripes? Uh, well, maybe in Russian, yeah. It probably is Russian then, fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, three, uh, three is Russian. Yeah, Russian well, now, in Polish. Polish, it would be uh, Trypaski. That's me pronouncing it probably incorrectly then. No, no, no. It can be in Russian. It sounds like Russian. Hmm. Yeah, no, we need to, we need, yeah, we need to, uh, that, I think that'd be quite fun. The next time Paul comes over to, to England or Scotland or whatever, yeah, you need to come and meet Paul Christoph. <laughs> Paul's, Paul's a character and a half. I love Paul. He's brilliant. Uh, I think Davor is bowing out. Uh, Craig is saying, Craig toasts everyone. Yeah. Uh, cheers, brother Craig. Birificio del Ducato. Oh yeah, Del Ducato is worth a mention. Yeah, definitely. Um, Grey Pale are obviously in Portugal, Spain, and Italy. Um, <laughs> tiramisu Imperios. I've got that one sitting in the 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 fridge, but I, it's that brewery is a pain in the arse to find information on. I've got that beer sitting in my fridge, and I want to review it, but I've not done it yet. Um, just because of the research is kind of come to a ground halt. But yeah, Brewfest. Oh yeah, Brewfest in Italy were always good. They had like yeah, this. They the one, did they not do the Spaceman IPA? Is that? Am I thinking of the right brewery? Spaceman IPA. Uh, doesn't ring a bell. Mm. Sorry, that's an old. That's a. That's a very. I, I know, old I know the beer, beer, but I can't remember. What Stranger, I, have to, I, I think I have to quit it because I have to get up quite early tomorrow. So. Well, no, I know, no worries, Christoph, no pressure. No, um, no, it, was, it, was awesome. it was nice to have you in. I've uh, been wanting to get yeah, you in. For a while. Nice, yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, no, awesome, Christoph. Like, as I say, we'll keep in touch about uh, I'd love to meet you and do some filming at Wylam or a couple of other places around Newcastle and uh, I want to do a section like kind of meet the blogger as well so interview like all of you guys and do that on the channel that would, that be, would awesome. be interesting yeah so yeah we'll sort that out as I say I need to, I don't know the exact timing for this little England tour that I want to do but uh, yeah no definitely I'll stop off in I'll probably stop in Durham and then catch you in Newcastle on the way home yeah definitely yeah, okay. we'll do that. But yeah, no, it was nice to have you, Christoph. So, guys, before Christoph goes, those of you who are still watching, go and give him some love, give him some subscribes and things. Uh, Christoph's got a very yeah. nice channel there, so go it and check. Out. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Nice, nice to have you, Christoph. See you soon, hopefully. You, right. You're always, you're always welcome to join us. So, if I forget to send you the link, just shout at me, and I'll give you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. See, See you later. See you later See you later. See you later, Christoph. Have a good one. Hey, cheers, mate. Cheers. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. I um I just did a quick um 
check on that Spaceman IPA you mentioned. Mm. And it is indeed, there's a Brewfist Spaceman IPA. It's a 7% ABV West Coast style IPA. And in the last hour, four people have checked it in on untapped. Mm. So I'm guessing that's the one you mean. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I got that in Valhalla's Goat in Glasgow years ago. I remember Valhalla's it was nice. Valhalla's Goat, bloody hell. He never is. Valhalla's Goat's awesome. I fucking yeah. love that place. Um, My language. Uh, when they're post Celtic. Okay. Mm. Oh, we've got Ro Rob. Where are you? Get your arse in here. Real Ale. Oh, we've got Real Hell. Yeah. Hey, Real Ale. Can't even say it. Real Ale. It's Real Ale. Hello, Real Ale. Real Ale Craft Beer. Where is Relano? Where I'm worried about this now. Relano. He's in. He's in. Now he's, he's worried, worried about Relano. He's in Saltaire. Fucking hell, mate. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's near Shipley. Oh, have we got this conspiracy theory now that it's Rob. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to make some space then if Rob wants to join in. And not because I'm going to bugger off because he's going to join, if he's going to join. But I've got work in the morning and um, I could really use a decent night's sleep. Uh, guys, if you really um, uh, any plans for doing something like this this weekend? I uh, usually don't drink that much during the week, so during the weekend will be. Uh, Harry's got hot. Harry's got hot. Happen. Yeah, Harry. Harry hosts Hot Flex and Chill. Um, yeah, from about, from about nine o'clock uh, UK time Saturday night. That will be ten. Ten years. Oh, ten years. Yeah, just a quick idea. Uh, maybe it's. Um, uh, maybe it's a nice idea to, uh, to uh, make up a mess messenger group uh, yeah. where if anybody of us wants to go online at any given point, you could just, you know, dump the link in there and anybody wants yeah. to join. Yeah. I'll do, I, I can make, I'll make that. that up. Uh, go for it. Just if, you, if you do that and anybody who just wants to show, if, uh, if I see something pop up, pop, up, pop up on Saturday evening, I might join because I don't really drink a lot during the week. It would be fun to join you guys and uh, have a, an actual pint instead of some water, you know? Yeah, mm. sure. Yeah, good. no, we can do that. You're always welcome. And like Her Definitely. Herbin oh. and uh, Remy are always welcome. The other guy that we should, is Simon as well from Biromaniac is always. Yeah, welcome. I think you can find him on, uh, you can find him on your, on uh, Facebook if you want him to join uh, every now and then. Yeah, I, I don't, I actually, I've never, I've only spoken to him on like, Instagram and shit. I've never actually messaged oh, him PM, but uh yeah, no, you guys in the Netherlands are always welcome to join us. Sounds like fun, man. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to bugger off then. I'll uh, see you guys later. Have a great uh, evening. Have a great chat. And uh, it was nice to join in for a bit. Yeah, cool. No, yeah. it was good so to have you in for a wee bit. Hey, right. Thomas. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Cool. See you later. Bye-bye. Uh, Davor is saying crack brewing. I've never had anything from yeah, that. Yeah, crack. Yeah. They're Barcelona, are they? They, they had a bit of hype, didn't they? Yeah, they did. I, I know I never really went for reviewed it. quite a few of their beers. Yeah. Mm. I, know, I never really went for it. Same as Garage, and I never really went to Garage either. I went for Garage Project. Yes, yeah, same here. Not, not, not Garage. They yeah, Garage. I've really, had a, yeah. I had a few really Garage. In. Yeah. Craig is saying Spaghetti Western from Brewfest. Yeah. I heard that, of that, was, yeah. that was... I had that back in 2015. Did Brew? Am I remembering right? Did Brewfish get bought over by somebody? Did they, did they not join one of the big boys and then they kind of disappeared? I don't know. I'll look. Um, not too sure. Uh, Paul's saying, "Paul, join us. If you're you're commenting this much, can you join us?" You can't do one of us. Yard. One of plus. One of uh, us. Why can he, why can he not do stream? Because his head his headphones don't connect to Streamyard. Same oh, uh, yeah. thing Pete was having problem with the other day. Ah, right, okay, okay. Yeah. That's a shame. It'd be nice because Paul's never been on one of my streams before, actually. I don't know who you are, Thomas, but it was enjoyable tolerating you in the stream tonight. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, no, uh, Paul, Thomas, is, uh, he's, his channel's Thomas Open. Yeah. At the crack, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe is Craig, is Craig going to be able to join for a little bit or... I can I can pop the link to the rest of the guys in my group, but I think it was only really Adam in that group who's quite vocal. Rory maybe might join. Yeah, if Rory wants to join, why not? Yeah. Cool. I'll uh, copy the link over. Mm. 
I think maybe another hour or so is probably going to be at, like at twelve thirty. Is probably going Yeah, I invited one of my friends. I invited a friend of mine from Japan, Nevit, but it's his morning, so I don't know. He might just. I said to him, "Well, um, even he was like, oh, but I might. I won't be able to drink and stuff because it's morning.'" I said, "Well, even if you can pop in and say hello, it's still quite cool to have someone from Japan as well." So, um, Nevit and well, I. It's and, eleven o'clock at night somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's never. Also at Five p.m. somewhere. Yeah, no. Ne- never and I are going to join. Uh, we're we're going to do like some. We're going to go and visit Kyoto Brewing in Japan uh, when I'm over there next time, and he'll yeah we'll do a few things. So I just thought it'd be cool because obviously they're eight hours ahead of us. I think at the moment. Um, let me just check time. I'll in... say that it's a, it's the first time I've bought that in a long time. And it's such a good beer. Life like and death. Beer. It's such a good beer. For, for a supermarket four pack, this, um, well, you know, eight cans for nine pounds. And it's a session of 6.5. Mm-hmm. You, you really cannot go wrong. It's it's actually, it's just, as a, as a fridge filler, it's really nice. Mm. Paul's saying that he's in the work just now, but going to have some fun, fun time at work. That's is that fact? Is, is that, oh, is that fat, fat time? Or do you have a new female employee? <laughs> oh, male. Well. Mm-hmm. Even if I have to pay good money for it. I'm not Put your headphones on, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> stick him on. Even if I had to pay good money, I really need to toss an Asian woman salad before. I... <laughs> oh dear! It's like what boy went to Japan? I think I it's finally hit yes, me at the big and nicely. <laughs> oh, Paul! This is why we love Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, imagine Paul in like Tokyo, like Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He would be in the height of people huh? around there. Oh yeah, I mean, no, they're all quite tall now, though. That's but yeah. Well, my little guy is quite funny. Like, if you see him against some of the Japanese babies, he's got like he looks as if he's only about six months old, and he's got he's he's bigger than some of the babies that are like a year old. It's quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that diet of rice. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the thing. The, the thing as well. The thing as well that's really funny. The thing as well that's funny is like you don't realise until he look like I'm still my friends have been saying to me they're like oh like it's I, I actually just joke with them when I, they ask me oh how's how's Doogie doing I'm like oh there you go there you can see him there's a wee picture and they're like and I just say I'm still surprised how white this kid is and like yeah I'm the same I didn't I just didn't want to say anything I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I, you see pictures of him and it's you don't notice until he's next to the other like Japanese babies like when you see him next to Michiko you you just don't think anything of it but when you see him next to the Japanese babies you're like yeah, white boy, white boy. That, that, that's 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 funny because like because uh, CJ obviously um, we've had a baby with with, with Zola, my sister. Um, mm. uh, she's Mongolian, and um, yeah, you you wouldn't be able to tell that she is she, she's not white. <laughs> basically, she's definitely not white. Mm. She's definitely uh, yeah you, you and obviously Asian as well. You you you'd think otherwise, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many pictures you've seen of my little guy right enough, um, but I really, I really, I mean, I think he really. Yeah, I've he, seen a few that you've shared. It's quite. I don't know. He, he really does look. I I think he really does look very white. He, he looks basically like me, except he's got his mum's like dark eyes. I think that's the only. Maybe got his mum's eye shape as well, but it's weird how if you see pictures of me when I was a baby and you see him. He looks exactly the same. His hair's a little bit darker. That's the only other difference, I think. Um, maybe his skin's a little bit of a slight different colour, but he really does. He looks so white. I, I was so surprised at that. I thought he would look a little bit more. I really thought he would look a little bit more Asian than he does. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, but he's doing. He's doing well. He's doing healthy. I just hope I can oh, get over good. and actually see him soon. Oh, so, yeah. 
Have it's you just got a, bit... a rough estimate of when you'll be able to go back over? Oh, no, really. It's they've no opened the the border. <laughs> um, they've opened it to Singapore. I think they're talking about opening it to Singapore, New Zealand, Australia, Malaysia. I think as well. But there's nothing about the European side of things yet. I was hoping that they would open it by July. Um. Because I was kind of yeah. like, well, if they open but it in July... Aren't there, any, aren't there any measures in place for situations like yours? Well, no, I mean, the thing with uh, Or is Japan, it just a complete like closure of borders? Oh, it's just it's a complete closure. I mean, if I went... I actually don't... I've heard two different conflicting things. Uh, it's like, I've heard on one side that the border's closed, so if I went to Japan, they wouldn't let me in. But I've also heard that if I went over, I'd have to isolate for two weeks. And I'm just kind of like, well, if I have to isolate for two weeks, there's no point going. It's like I don't want to waste money on a hotel for two weeks. Um, hmm. And the other thing is, Michiko's, Michiko's grandmother is like 90, and I'm like, I'm not going into that house. Um, when I, I could have caught something on the plane, I'm not going to know for two weeks and I could infect her grandma. Yeah. I'm like, nah, not doing that. No way. Yeah. Um, because if you're on a, if you're on a plane, you're getting recirculated air. You've got no idea. You really yeah. don't. Um, I taking a gas mask with you really on the plane. If you could do. Yeah. I mean, they, I don't know about getting some of the, I don't know if even a face mask is good enough for that. Um, the other thing would be to go to the airport, get out of the airport and then like, chuck it throw it in the bin or whatever just before i go to their house but even then i'm still very reluctant you know you'd basically go into the house doesn't you know shower everything clean yourself up and then mm. you're okay but i think even then it's a bit see iffy. i know i know for yeah. example when, Ta- when tash comes here she's got a self-quarantine upstairs but i know for a start that in reality it's not going to happen very well and i just i'm preparing just thinking i could be ill because she's going to be on a flight. She's she's perfectly clean. Hong Kong's perfectly clean, but she's going to be on a flight over here, recirculated there and all that. You never know. And then she'll, she'll go through Heathrow, and then I'll pick her up. All the social distancing that we have to do, and then here, and then she's going to be my social bubble, um, as you're now allowed to do that. But mm. at the same time, it's just... You don't, you don't, you don't know what planes going to be like because they're just not social distancing yeah. and they're com- they're complaining and moaning saying, oh, you know, life shit for everyone. Just, they're complaining and moaning saying, oh, it's, it's really hard for us. Blah blah blah. I don't care. Honestly, don't care because it's shit for the rest of us. Everyone else is feeling pinch as well in terms of yeah. businesses. So. And that, that, that's the thing with flights. I'm always ill after a flight anyway. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that there's a killer disease. Yeah, or virus mm-hmm. that's going around. It's just like, nah. It'd be great if you couldn't breathe on planes. Just don't breathe. Yeah. And then, and then you. F- <laughs> and then, then get induced into off. a coma. Everyone just have to ship everyone everywhere. Mm. That that'll be where the British Empire would be like. Yes, we're going to make our money, make our comeback. Just ship everyone mm. to different places on on this new royal ship. The, the new royal yacht they, they were talking about making. Oh yeah, it's a new royal yacht where Prince Andrew's going to go around and molesting kids, kids around around the world. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was quite gutted that we weren't able to be up in Hong Kong that time, but that would yeah, be fun. yeah, I, no, it would have been good. I really want to. I think I think probably what I'm going to do when I go out to Japan now is fly to Hong Kong and then. Book a cheap because it's cheaper to go to Hong Kong and then you can get the cheap connecting flight over yeah. to Osaka. So I think that's probably what I lo- I don't know what it is about that city. I love Hong Kong. I love it. I I hope it stays how it is. I don't know if it will, if it will, but I hope it stays how it is. Um, the people's resilience, I hope, is strong. Well, it is definitely very strong, but I don't think it's going to beat whatever China want to bring to it. No. I think China China that's will just ruin it. They'll yeah. just destroy yeah. that country, and and, and they, they'll. I just unless the UK. Un, I mean, unless the UK show some balls and actually declare them in breach of the treaty, but I think there's too many people in the government who've got yeah. interest, uh, you yeah. know, investments yeah, and things. Definitely. They'll never, they'll never do that. They'll never declare them in breach of the treaty. No. But th- and that, and to be honest, that's the only legal route that is available is for the UK to declare 
China you, in breach of the treaty. You, you, you've got to think as well for UK um, uh, people who, who've ever invested as well, bringing those, anyone uh, out of Hong Kong who has invested and worked in Hong Kong, bring them to the UK. That would be more money for the UK as well in the long, long term. Um, so it's, it's a win-win in the UK idea, but in terms of like us enjoying Hong Kong, no, it's going to be completely different. So highly recommend going and visiting there as soon as well, possible. I, hope, I mean, I do hope that whatever happens with the, the Scotland-England situation in the future, I do hope that and uh, that we do our fair share of that and that's something we work together with, um, with the Hong Kong situation. Same with the, Gur- the same with the Gurkha. I don't think they will, though. Uh, I don't think Scotland wants to have anything to do with England for I mean, the I, future. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, if it was if it was me that was in charge, I would be wanting to help us. I would be wanting us to help with Hong. I mean, I'd be quite happy for us to take our share of the Hong Kong people if it comes to that, and the Gurkhas as well. I hope that's something that does it. But I think there's. The, I think the UK is on its. The UK is on its last legs now. Yeah. I don't yeah. think there's much doubt about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I, I, I think, um, I think honestly speaking, anyone who is coming from Hong Kong would rather pick uh, somewhere like Singapore, for example, for its wealth um, and corruption, or uh, parts, certain parts of Africa, or England, uh, being London, just London, essentially. Um mm. Because London, I honestly go there, it's like a different country. Whenever I go there and actually the, the, the people who I meet and people I speak to, it's like a different country compared to what I, I'm used to. I think, honestly, in Scotland, I think the life, the, the standard of living is, um, I think we've, I, I think in Scotland, even, I mean, I noticed that when I was studying it. I went to Durham because I thought, well, that will be not too different in terms of thing. And it was, it was a completely different culture. There really is a, a very, very different Culture. I mean, I, I, when I was there, I can't understand in England why they voted down. You see the the kind of deprivation and the 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 people are just they're so passive about the social problems, and you just you just wouldn't find that in Scotland. Um, I think I think there's just there's a big difference between the two countries on that yeah. um, side of things, and uh, I think you know I think my my generation obviously are starting to take over in Scotland now. I think there's the UK. They just it needs the vote needs to be done. It ne- they need to Scotland needs to go its own way and let England do what it's going to do, because I think we are in Scotland. I think we are suffering for the fact that we've got quite a divided populace at the moment because the old people want to stay part of the UK. The young people want to do our own thing. It needs, and I mean, it's only going to go one way. It's inevitable now. Um, and they're saying in the polls, apparently the polls are showing that uh, people are far more confident in the Scottish government now to deal with things because they've dealt with corona relatively well. I mean, the, 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 the one standout thing or the one outlier, if you like, is the, the, the way it got into the care homes and just ran rampant. That's the one that's the one outlying thing. But other than that, people have sh- it's been shown that people have been quite confident in Holyrood to deal with this. Um, so I think that you, I think people are, but they think that Boris Johnson, uh, they, I think that this is the interesting thing. I think that a lot of people in Scotland don't know how badly managed the services in England have been like with all these trusts and everything. I know it because I obviously trained there and stuff, but I think they've done so much asset stripping and everything in England. And that's, I, I don't get that. I don't get why that's, why people put up with that in England, I really don't. But that's just me. Yeah. Mm. It's just it's, it's, never. I never use a state mm. apart from bin bin collection. That's it. Mm. Bin collection and, and street lights, mm-hmm. motorways. Yeah, maybe. That that's about it. I think I think that's a key issue as well. Because I mean, to be quite honest with you. If I was in Scotland, I would actually trust the go- I actually would trust the, the government to give me good health care. I had a great education in Scotland. Um, I would actually trust Holyrood to um, deliver these things. I would trust this in Sweden. I would trust the Swedish government to 
get me what I need. But I think in England, you guys, I can, I can understand why, but I think you guys don't trust Westminster. It's, it's just far too tied to the monarchy for me. Yeah. And we, we yeah. know they're all paedophiles and, and uh, fucking wandering around the world, mm. touching kids, and uh, many other reasons as well why, why, why they're corrupt. But, uh, yeah, I just can't. can't. I, I, I can't say, I, I, like, I don't know where, whenever, whenever I pay my council tax, which is about, well, just over £1,000 a year, I honestly don't know where that goes. It just gets misspent. A lot of it. Mm. Um, yeah. Shitty, Miss for example. The lines, the pockets. Oh, exactly. When, like, I, I know uh, when my ex, when she was working at, um, she was working in, in hospitals uh, for the NHS, and, and the, rather than buying simple heaters, they went and bought the most expensive Dyson fan heaters. I was like, you could have just bought yeah. something from fucking Argos. Yeah. Why did you have to get these? Every single unit was like 350 quid. And that's where the mis- misspending get, gets into place. It's because they're like, "Oh, we need this this thing, and we need to look at top range as if we're you know we're, we're spending our money in the right place." And spending, yeah. and, and and it's yeah. like a showpiece. No, you don't. You need something that's fifteen quid. Does a fucking job. You don't need to spend three hundred fifty quid on it. And and they had nineteen units in one ward. And it's just yeah. ridiculous the money they spend in certain places. And then the it's NHS like, as well like, what, moans, and, moans and says, "Oh, we're, we're, we're under, under yeah. budget and uh, under uh, under bollocks." Are you fucking you fucking massive budget, massive budget, and you're just spending it in the wrong way? It's because people just at the top are spending it in the wrong way. Bunk it up the wall. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. They, I mean, they'd much what, rather pay pay for independent contracts than just, like I said, just like we'll buy it ourselves. Yeah. Just someone on a lunch break, go out to Argos. Home yeah. base, whatever. Yeah. Just get this stuff. We can just plug it in. We don't need to contract a company to source it yeah. for the labour costs. And it's just it's like, you know, that one person on the board knows someone in this company. It's like, oh, I'll do you a favour. Yeah. I'll give you X amount of money for you to install this, this, and this. No, we'll just get it's like so to unnecessary. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And that's the problem with the UK. Yeah. The NHS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over, over expenditure in the NHS. But no, that's one of the many problems. Yeah. I think, I mean, and that's the thing is, I think in Scotland it's actually... Okay, I mean, as I say, I think this is another thing. Is I mean, I think this the statements that you guys have made there is the problem that you have in England is that your NHS is run by trusts, which are essentially private organisations, yeah. mm-hmm. whereas in Scotland it is run fully by the public. But we need in Scotland we need to really restructure. We need to kind of create a properly regional governmental system. We need to kind of, um, you know, we need to sort of uni- not unify, but um, you know, we need to give uniform jurisdiction over certain areas. You know, we need to make it regional. It needs to be like police, justice, fire, all of these kind of things. They all need to be responsible for a certain area, but not to the extent where if there's a big fuck off thing in Fife that people from Clint Manninshire can't go over the border and help them out. You know, it needs to be like um, it needs to be like that. But I think the points that you guys have made kind of show there's not a lot of trust in England for public services. So. Yeah. I've, I've got to speak to a police officer soon. I, I don't know. Oh, is, is that about the bike? The biking incident. The, the bikes, yeah. So I've got to mm. speak to them about that. Like I, I got asked earlier, um, mm. what, "What's your phone number?" Blah blah blah. And then we're going to call you next couple of days. I was like, "So I, I don't know." I, I was honestly straight away. I was like, "So I can't have any beers over the next couple of days because I've got to maintain like a straight conversation with them." And. Uh, Hopefully they call me first thing tomorrow evening. Um, but yeah, they, they found the guys. They found the lads. Uh, they've been done for it, but they just wanted to have my uh, video again. I, I said resent it. They just wanted to have it again. They want to speak to me about it, and I don't know what they want to speak to me about it uh, regarding. But um, I might have, I don't know whether it's something to stand up in court or something and say this is my footage or whatever. But uh, yeah. Fun. Mm. 
I don't want to. I don't want my face to. The thing is, I I quite like living down here because I'm quite reasonably anonymous. Like I just go mm. in my house, I just chill, and that's it. So I don't want to be known locally too much. Apart from the, there's certain places which know me, but like you know pubs and bars and stuff. But other, otherwise, I don't really want to be known in the community too much because it's easier not to be. Oh yeah, no, I get that. Definitely get that. Um. Yeah, no, it's always nice. It's always nice to just kind of re- retain a little bit of anonymity. Yeah, when when the population is like nine thousand, so is that the size of your little town? Yeah, it's tiny. Every, most people know each other. Like um, one of the guys I work with, he knows everyone, absolutely everyone. He was like, "Oh, that surname." I, I was like, uh, "Yeah," I was speaking to someone. I was like, "Blah blah blah surname." And and he was like, oh, oh uh, yeah, I know what road they live on. I know there's not many of them in the, in this town. I know the other ones live in this, this town. And I was like, oh fucking, hell, you just know everyone. I mean, in my the, the little village that I'm from is uh, three thousand. That's the village yeah. that I grew up in in Scotland. Three thousand. Yeah, it mine's town. We got we got eight pubs. Peter's been to a few of them. Hmm. We went to the uh, the Lamb, yeah, very the nice well, pubs. The Welly, the Royal Oak, and then the Fuller's Pub as well. Get in, dirty lamb. Get in, dirty lambs. Right. Have you got some nice food down there? Some nice pub burgers and stuff. Oh yeah, because like uh, the the Welly is a Pie Minister pub. It's got Pie Pie Minister p- pies. If you tried any of them, I love Pie Minister. And I remember the bill when, I, when we walked down, we had like three, four pints, I don't know. And then full on pies with mash and peas and a gravy. Three of us, £24. Because I get massive discount. But it, it was great. And then I think, Pete, uh, Peter, do you have, what, what bid do you have along with yours? You have like the farmers, did you? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, farmers. I think it was the farmers. Yeah. Yeah, I think P- Peter and I would have had farmers, and I think Dean had milk stout, which was on keg, and there was a keg downstairs, but they got a bottle, um, and the bottle was like, I was like, yeah, that would be vintage, that would be nice, um, and then had the had the pies as well, and the pies were great, and then the lamb, the the beers and lamb were a bit shit, um. The Fuller's was okay. I think we went to the Royal Oak the night before. Yeah. Uh, the Royal Oak was good fun. And I think when I was with Peter, uh, when just just me and Peter, we went to Devises. And Devises, they've got a couple of... They've got... I now know they've got three craft beer bars, but when we went, I, we only went to one. And then we went to the White Bear afterwards. But yeah, the uh, the vaults it was that we went to, where they had, I since learned they had loads of bottles of mills up on the wall, which you probably should have bought as well. I think you, you maybe yeah. spotted them, and you were like, what are those? And I was like, bottles of mills. And they were like £17 a bottle for like ridiculous bottles of mills, and you can take as many as you want. And I since bought two and then drank them, but I was like, oh, I should, probably should have saved them. <laughs> Don't they have a web shop now? The vaults. I have, I have, no, uh, mills. I have, yeah, mills do. Yeah, I don't know if it's loaded up yet. Um, Was it Mills Brewery? Uh, mills Brewing. Uh, mills Brewing, England. Bit Gloucestershire. Yes. Can't find their website yeah. though. Right, jump off for a second, go and grab a beer. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. I'm on the uh, craft Pepsi. The craft pe- I like a good. I like a good Pepsi Max. Are you on the full sugar or the craft? Oh, yeah, Max? Pepsi Max. Uh, Pepsi Max. It's oh, the I only one like. I like drinking. I do like it. I Pepsi like- diet is much worse for you than that. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I like Pepsi Max, but I mean the in Sweden we're getting a Pepsi Max raspberry, and it's I love it. 
See that that's what that's one of the things missed about um, Germany because they had a brand called Do you remember Schwitzrap? No, actually, I don't. Which was the <laughs> Coke and Orange, mm. which is massive over in Germany, just Coke and Orange. But you, you hardly get that here. I in don't fact, remember. I've never that. seen a variant that's got orange. I really don't remember that one, I have to say that. Yeah. And I also remember, um, I think it's Coke and Orange, Spetsy from Paulana, which was like a soft drink. Hmm. Uh, it's amazing how many breweries will produce their own sort of soft drinks and then obviously use them when they make the Rattlers. I have to admit, I never liked Rattler. I never got into Rattler. Oh, I love Rattlers. I don't know why the UK breweries don't embrace that a little bit more. I think people would much rather go for a Rattler. Sort of like an alcohol-free market. You know something that I hated, though? Cola beer. Yeah, I did not like cola beer. Co- cola beer is fucking horrible. No, no. That, that wasn't... They've got like a really big youth drinking culture in Germany, but they've got like half or like three quarters of the youth drinking crime. Oh yeah, yeah, no. It's the, the but the thing is, they behave. They're not stupid. They behave themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a great. I love that about Germany. It's I do miss living in Germany. I, I've been. I've often thought about just about you know going back, but. I think I could find a job in Berlin, but mm, I don't know if I'd want yeah, to live I think, in Berlin. I think Berlin is probably the city in Germany that I'd like to actually live in. Mm. Just because so, a lot of the, the places I go to are run by people from all over the world. Well, I think, so as, an English, a, I think as an English yeah. speaker, it's fairly easy to get a job in Berlin. Yeah. Well, I'd say a lot of lot of the places they've got English speakers who don't really learn German. It's Churchill's long term plan. Because there's, there's there's no pressure to be fully German when you go to cities like Berlin, just because of how multicultural they are and how strong the the emphasis on the English. Because some of the the most fluent. European speakers that I've spoken to who speak English are from Germany because the English language curriculum it's ingrained into modern society. Yeah. But you, you don't get that in England. Well, you know, I think I honestly think that's one of the things in Scotland that we could do better is that we should be learning Gaelic from a very young age to cement the idea of a second language and then you know we we should be given like French or Spanish along with German you know another Germanic language and a Romantic language I think that's what we should be doing. I say the same along with 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 English would would be that I I, I wish that um, my granny when when I was young she taught me a little bit of, of Irish old Irish I can't remember any of it, but I wish that we would learn some form of Gaelic language, say a bit of Welsh or well, well, Gaelic, Celtic language, a bit of Welsh or or uh, Old Irish or something like that. Mm. Would have been ha- well, not very handy, yeah. but would have been interesting because then you, as a result of that, you could learn more about the uh, the countries that surround you, rather than learning French. Because in in, in reality, English people who learn French, when are you ever going to use your French? <clears throat> we hate exactly. French. The the attitude that my high school had when it came to the French lesson was, oh, this is just a sit off with your mates. Yeah, yeah. Just have a bit of a laugh. And it's 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 quite. It was fun at the time, but I look back and it's it's quite sad because there's mm. no sort of incentive for for kids in England to learn a second language. Yeah. And the only time you get the opportunity is if you've excelled in French. And then as you advance through high school, you get more opportunities, like learn Spanish. But again, it's just English and Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's in our curriculum. And I think it's really sad, because I think a lot of people benefit from 
learning it's... languages like German, Italian. We we had we had German at school, but I think the problem was that you know, like we did English, uh, we, sorry, the French at uh, the first year of senior. And then it was it was French all the way through. You were always forced to, to learn French. But then um, we did German in the second year of senior school and Spanish at the same time as well. So you did doing it was very, you did so many subjects in in the second year of senior school. You did like French, German, Spanish, Latin, and then all the shite fucking history and English and all that lot. And, you know, the normal lot that you do. But then in the in the final year, the senior school, we would like then said told to choose. Then you just choose what you want, like out of your, out of your languages for your GCSE. So mine was like, I'm not going to choose any languages. I'm just going to do French because I'm shit at languages, and then the rest is just going to be like DT and art. But I think you should be forced to do more. You should should be forced to do a language. Um, I think the yeah. problem in high school. I'd love to, I'd love to learn Russian because. It'll be so handy right now for stuff I think, that I want to learn about. I think the thing is, they start us off on languages too late. But we should be yeah. learning languages. Yeah. We should be learning them preschool. from preschool. The preschool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's, I think I think in Scotland, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's a bit more open in Scotland. People are a bit more keen for it, but I think it's. I don't know. I think it's it really needs to go on from the ground up. But the problem is, you'll always get teachers' unions complaining about it because it puts more work on the um, the teachers in the classroom and things. But it needs to be done from primary level. It needs to be yeah. done at primary school level. Yeah, because then it's, it's it's in the mindset. It's just you know, it's it's in their heads. I think there's there's too much focus around playtime mm -hmm. and just fucking learning shite. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and learning, learning. Well, just being indoctrinated in, into the socialist way of buying clothes and and and, and Coronation Street and fucking Emmerdale and all that shit. And that when you should be yeah. learning and educating yourself and getting more yeah, out of life. Mm -hmm. We're getting. No, we've got a few more comments. Uh, Paul's saying that during Prohibition, many breweries, breweries turned into soda manufacturers, and they did both. Um, great to learn a second language. I agree, hundred percent. Mm. So we'd make a choose between French, German, or Spanish as a mandatory second language. Yep, I've had that experience as working as a teacher. Yep, I know that. Uh, me and the girlfriend are learning Russian because it and it's a fucking nightmare. Oh, the grab. Yeah, I've been studying Russian at university. The grammar, it's actually quite easy to learn how to speak Russian, but the grammar and the case systems are very difficult to get your head around in Russian. There's really um, something learning with someone would be an in interesting because I know I'm shit. Mm -hmm. No, Russian is very interesting. I I like learning Russian, but um, I think the first course I've only done one course so far, but I need to focus, finish off my Swedish and do my Japanese. But then I might go back to Russian, and I fancy having a go at Spanish. Oh. I don't. If I only study one, I'm shit at it. But if I study two together, I actually work quite well. So yeah. CJ, CJ is a good person to speak to. He's fluent in Russian, so mm. that's why we think yeah. he's a spy. Oh, okay. it, it was it was like when I was I was learning German, like once a week at a night school in Germany, and I was in the mindset of I want to appease the tutor to make it look like I've learned it when I wasn't actually learning it. Mm. And it's just, it's been ingrained to me from my experience from primary school and high school. Yeah. And I think that, that part of that mentality really worked against uh, my living situation in Germany. Because it was just like, when it came to going to the, the night school and learning German, I was more worried about Oh God! If I if I don't sound like I've learned much, I'm going to get embarrassed in front of the classroom. Yeah. And I look back then, out it's such a I don't know my whole self confidence until I came back to England. I, I've just realised just how bad it really was. Just trying to please people so there wasn't any confrontation. So it really worked against me, and like. 
cut to like three years coming back. My German has, it wasn't at a high level anyway, but now it's just completely got to, as if I've never spent like it's four because, years. It's probably because you're not German. practicing it. Practicing it at all as well. well? That's it, yeah. Although, that being said, last time I was there uh, from a friend's wedding, I was like talking to like old school Bavarian, like 60, 70 year olds who didn't really have the opportunity when they were growing up to learn English. And being in Bavaria, because there's, there's a vast difference, well, from region to region, language a lot of the time, but that was all saying German is nowhere near like the clarity of correct German. There'd always be this stereotype of well, even people who like did, lived in like the northern region of Germany, they hear a Bavarian and they'd be like, What the fuck are you saying to me? <laughs> Like so scousers. me learning Bavarian German, yeah, exactly. It's like a scouser <laughs> with a <laughs> with someone from Cambridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We've got some interesting more comments. Uh, yeah, you have to. You have to. Yeah, you have to find you what you learn makes it more fun. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to, to find the English to German language toys for our kids, but we can only find the Spanish ones. Yeah. If you want to learn Russian, learn how to speak. Then yeah, no, that's it. They exactly the Russians don't give a shit about the grammar. It is more just letters. Yeah, letters don't learn Russian letters grammar. Letters run the wrong way. Yeah. yeah, the Russians don't give a shit about grammar. This <laughs> oh, can go this letters way. Letters with lines. And... Declination, <laughs> of German gra- declination of German grammar is yeah. hard for me. Oh yeah. Um, oh, th- yeah, three. We like that. Run the wrong way. Yeah, but yeah. My, my Russian pronunciation is very good, but my vocabulary is very bad. Yeah. Uh, but I love being in Germany and trying to learn people and really appreciate me. Try- yeah, the Germans are great like that. The Germans really do encourage you if you're in there. Um, the same with Yorkshire as well, I heard. Cool. Trying, yeah, under, trying to understand Stuggy Picard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> Did you take it? Yeah. I think, I think, by the way, guys, we should maybe like in 10 minutes or so, we'll cut it at the four hour mark. Yeah. 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 Uh, we looked online but couldn't find anything. Fuck the backwards R, by the way. Oh, the yeah. That's a yeah in Russian. Yeah. Backwards R. Yeah. Um, I agree. You found 100% the Germans to be very kind. So, yeah, the Germans are great. The Germans are. Yeah. I love. I mean, I had a great time in Germany. I really, I'd like to go back there. I, I, the only reason I didn't yeah. go back to Germany was just my German wasn't high enough to learn physics, basically. So, yeah, mm. yeah. No, that's it. I mean, that being said, uh, as much as I like criticise my my knowledge of German, I can I could go about my daily business. Mm. It would just be if I'd like get into like the legislative sort of things, like the official sort of um things but mm. every day so like going to the supermarket uh going to a bar uh basic conversations yeah, I, can, I can easily handle i might not be able to respond to a question but i'll understand what the question is and i'll be able to come up with a response but i won't have the words in a correct manner yeah with a pint in your hand and shouting at them in english why can't you understand my English in it? We won the war. Can you not understand it? <laughs> this is not a real ale. This is a German lager shite. As long as it's not Belgian. It's not Belgian, it's German. I don't like East. Oh, I like yeah. Germans, but I don't like the English. Yeah. But I'm from England. But, Gotta um, say, though, I've, I've spent pretty much 100 quid on beer this week, but I'm still. Um and an hour and about getting that uh, like 24, 24 pack from beer merchants or 12 um, was it 12 or 12? it was 12, 12. yeah 12. I, I, from yeah. what Iyengar the uh, uh, no um, oh it's Augustina Augustina oh, Augustina I tell you what yeah. um, they also on beer merchants had Paolana in a mini keg I saw that and it was like 
12 quid for, for the this, 12 pack and the t- how they, much they is had, the mini keg? The, the mini keg was 22 pounds 23 pounds for a 5 litre and I priced it up and I was like now I can go and get myself a case for cheaper oh Peter's gone silent <laughs> didn't hear any of that Peter yeah. Oh, uh, my internet is absolutely awful because we've had a little bit of wind tonight. So, oh, the wind. Yeah, just a very gentle breeze is enough yeah. to. It was, it was the same here. Back to die It was the same here. Yesterday we had wind, rain. Oh, power cuts. Here you go. But yeah, what do you say? Probably. Uh, but yeah. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, it was the the mini keg. Uh, I've I've got to completely put any sort of mini keg activity on hold because I just don't have the the correct storage. Okay, yeah. Just get a cheap, fridge. especially if cheap fridge. See, the thing that that gets me about mini kegs is people say, "Oh, you you open the seal at the top and leave it for twenty four hours chilled." But some people just say, just yeah. open the seal and then just pour straight away. Yeah, like, as you go. Open, honestly, yeah. open the seal because that's like cracking the top of your can or crack the top of the bottle. Yeah. Just, I, honestly, what I do is I pour the first bit with the top sealed. And so pour the first bit, you get about half a pint out with the top sealed. And then do you ship the top and then you get like more out. And then go from there. Like... I, as soon as you've got that can, um, you can pull the first bit out, and that's fine. Get the half pint out, and that's your angel share, essentially. But as soon as you open it up, then it's like a race for me. Drink it as, as quick as you can, the rest of it. I think when uh, we need to do a dragon soup special when I come to your place, yeah. Harry, as well. I need yeah, to I mean, don't get me wrong. If you, if, you get, if you get a mini keg of Paolo on it, you're not going to keep it. For a while, no. you're gonna just pour Wait, like, as like, soon like, as your glass is empty. I said, I said to uh, to Barry Kane because we're gonna do this Kane cast. Well, oh, Craig's. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know what Kane cast is. Oh, dear, Craig. Yeah. Howdy. How's it going, Craig? Not bad. Not bad. Just finally got a bit of time to myself. You know? ah, no. I was so, I was thinking just to cut it off in about five minutes, so it's cool that you can join us for the last few. We'll do it. We'll stay online afterwards, but I'm thinking to cut the live in about five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do an arcane cast, but it's uh, it, it's going to be just like we've got six, I think, we, no, four Imperial Stouts. I think two random beers and the rest are like IPAs or double IPAs. And it's just going to be Danny Kane and Barry Kane in a room together talking shite, offending everyone. Can um, Jimmy, can Johnny, can Jimmy McBrain join? Jim, Jim, Jim McBrain, can, he can join if he wants to. I'd watch that. Mm. Yeah. I need to get my, I need to get my Jimmy hat and my balaclava. Like like a um, Barry's idea was for it to be something along the lines of what's that fucking famous uh, podcast chap in the states? Um, anyway, Joe Rogan. Rogan, yeah, it, it was like along along the lines of that, and I was like, you, I said to him, mate, you do not understand how much money that kit costs. And he was like, but it, it's just like a couple of guys talking to each other. I don't know, I was like, yeah, it's probably about oh, four or yeah. five grand for the whole fucking kit. That he's got talking to each other is like, okay, we're get, we're just going to do it on a camera. Yeah. We're just literally just going to do the whole like, thing. His studio as well. No, I, I've never watched it, but I just I, I saw a screenshot and I was like, it's that's a, costing. It's a essentially, yeah, yeah. It's essentially a compound. He's got a compound. It's got like a gym in there, a pool table, everything you all want. sorts of things. Yeah. Has he got a private island? And, uh, <laughs> it might come out in a few years. <laughs> a private island and a, and a royal cruise ship. 
or yacht. Yeah, giving kids DMT. <laughs> I don't. I do not sweat. I don't sweat. <laughs> I think we should maybe. What we'll maybe do then before it descends further and further is we'll maybe cut the live the yeah. live stream here. Um, so yeah, oh, I think we'll do some hallucinogenics. <laughs> I think, yeah, we'll leave it here. I mean, it's been fun. It's been having to have the guy. We had Craig on at the very last minute, of course, and we've had various others during the night. For those of you that are still watching us uh, talking shit, just I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been nice to host another live stream. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to just kind of call it quits at that because we're all, I think, very, very tired. At least I'm very, very tired. And uh, I think it's about time. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Right. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you check out Harry at Blue Nose Beer Reviews, Peter at The Clueless Drinker, Craig at Kent Beer Reviews. We had Christoph from Ale Degustations. We had Thomas Opent and we had Adam from Mersey Beers as well. So go and check out all of these guys. We're ending the live stream now. We're just going to chill for a little bit and uh, that'll be that. But yeah, thank you for your support. Check out these guys and I will catch you guys very soon. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. See you later, guys. See you later. Toodles. Toodles, motherfucker. Bye. 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 You've been watching too much. Tell. You've been watching too much. Tell. Bye. 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 Bye